नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेरी वन वेलकम टू उपज एपिसोड 17 बिफोर वी मूव ऑन टू आवर गेस्ट देयर आर अ कपल ऑफ अनाउंसमेंट्स फर्स्टली बारिंग एपिसोड 13 वी हैव ऑलवेज अपीयर्ड ऑन फ्राइडेज एज इट इज द पेंडेमिक इज स्लोली रिसीडिंग एंड इट लुक्स लाइक इट वोंट कम बैक लेट्स होप फॉर द बेस्ट सो सो व्हाट हैपेंस नाउ इज अ because all the live concerts are opening up uh, not all of our guests will be available on fridays which is why we might have to move the show to different days of the week just like it's yeah. happening today and uh, secondly we are also trying out another change that is in addition to a senior artist being our guest answering the question there will also be guests asking the questions from our generation yeah. the first of which is also happening today so without further yeah. ado let us <laughs> Uh, come to our guest uh, i mean the guest will be answering the questions uh, <laughs> so you see episode 17 sounds 17 is a very special number for hindustani classical musicians because it denotes the fact that you have come back to the sum after completing one cycle or avartan of teen tal so exactly. to celebrate that we have the director of avartan school of music of course that is one of the many ways in which we can introduce him so tabla maestro shri shubhod jyoti guho and uh, dada welcome to the show and thank you so much host is welcome. another fantastic tabla artist from our generation shri tejo bruj joshi welcome to both i'm humbled i'm humbled hello uh, thank, thank you, you so much, much. Yeah. really thank happy so to be here honor to be here yeah really happy and also it's a big uh, pleasure and honor for me as well that you have invited me and uh, talking of 17 of course 17 is a very important number for us and uh, avartan is my brain child <laughs> trying uh, to spread my music in my own humble way That's and talking about the pandemic hopefully it will not come back like uh, anirban said but uh, right. they should not get they should not uh, get the idea of the episode we are doing today you know upaj <laughs> if the pandemic yeah. starts upaj then it will be difficult to handle <laughs> right right Uh, that would be one uh, unnecessary upaj <laughs> exactly so <laughs> <laughs> maybe you would like to start with the first question yeah great uh, so uh, again uh, it's a it's it's an honor to be here it's an honor to be in the midst of a, a senior of uh, of course uh, you know uh, uh, an artist in or an or a musician in so many ways that i've uh, heard from my childhood uh his i have adored his music since my childhood i have adored him in ways more than one uh, because as a performer uh, we tend to follow some things of or, or or some ideals of what our senior musicians do and uh, uh, i i cannot believe or you know i cannot wait to have this learning experience from him so thank you so much to, to you know anirban bhai as well to invite me here and to dada for being here uh, so um, as a musician i think this question interests uh, so many people because uh, uh, because something like the initiation of music or uh, something in which some some ways in which you have been introduced to music is uh, is always uh, you know i find it very amusing because people get into music in the most amazing ways possible or most weirdest ways possible you know <laughs> there is no, there's no really no distinction to that uh, but uh, you know uh, being from a music musical family myself musical background myself uh, exactly. music just seeped into me somehow and um, i'd like like to uh, raise or answer this question to you as well uh, you know uh, i i'd love to know how you got attracted to music or what were your very first musical lessons or yeah. what how was your start of the journey well <clears throat> uh, growing up in india like i think as uh, kids we don't have too many options or choices i mean we are not asked like when we are kids that what you want to do or uh, our parents decide for us for ourselves so i think you also can relate to that a little bit so you are younger to me so i was born earlier than you so it was more strict those days like no options will be given to the kid parents will decide what they will do so uh, as far as i know i was told later when i was already learning tabla uh, my dad told me my few of my aunts also told me that i had a very natural instinct for rhythm uh, like 
any song or any musical piece uh, that i heard as a kid i could uh, tap exactly uh, to the correct tempo and correct rhythm so my parents and other relatives they thought that okay uh, this kid might do well in percussion so the obvious percussion in a bengali family is tabla so that's how i was introduced to tabla and one of my aunts my father's uh, third sister uh, she lives in sweden now she purchased me the my first pair of tablas when i was actually not very i was not i didn't start at the age of 5 like they already in the biodata at the age of 5 he was introduced to i think uh, uh, most of this is not true because at the age of 5 we still don't have the mental stability to get introduced to a serious subject like tabla or sitar or sarod uh, exactly but make it fascinating sometimes they announce that way but i didn't get introduced yeah. at the age of 5 i think i got introduced later Uh, so i what i remember is my official training of tabla started in my neighborhood there was one gentleman who was a tabla trainer here uh, and uh, that was at the age of 9 or 10 and uh, so that happened like that so my father and my parents my mother both of them decided that okay let's put him into tabla because he is so good in rhythm and then i also joined another institution here music institution in south kolkata known as bani chakra which is very popular lot of uh, they produce lot of students every year i think onirban is familiar with the name also and then later on uh, after after a certain period of time i started showing interest in tabla and i was uh, picking up stuff pretty fast and so this uh, teacher who was in my neighborhood he told my dad that he is picking up things very fast i think you should take him to somebody who senior and who will be able to teach him a long, long time because i am getting exhausted of my material in a very short time <laughs> so then my dad actually my father is a medical doctor but he inside he is a musician uh, and so are, are my other two uncles but when they were born in, in those days in uh, 30s and 40s uh, it was a very rare uh, event or happening that somebody from middle class uh, went into music or took up music as profession but inside they nurtured the passion so if you ask musicians of our age you will get the same reply that our parents kind of they are living their dreams through us uh, so uh, my father actually when he was studying uh, medicine he was also taking tabla lessons from ustad karamatullah khan sahab who is our doyen of our farukabad gharana and he knew my guruji from those days uh, my guruji pandit shankar chatterjee he knew him because he was a guru bhai of my guruji so he thought that okay if yeah. i have to uh, put my son under training of somebody it has to be somebody like really good and who will be able to guide him properly so he started looking for uh, guruji pandit shankar chatterjee and he was out of touch with him because he went into a different profession and so he asked uh, some of his friends to look for him and coincidentally it's my big fortune that we discovered guruji 10 minutes walking distance from my house <laughs> so actually that was a sign i think that i was uh, meant to Definitely. study and be it was like a sign from above that i was meant to be his disciple that's why uh, he was so close to where i was staying so that was a real good fortune for me and uh, definitely life changing event and then i went to guruji and my dad also uh, it was like meeting of two friends and he was like oh yes yes i remember you but then what happened you stopped learning he said yeah i went into a different field and but i want my son to learn so oh, please take care of him and i remember that was december 1983 Uh, first went to him and uh, then after one month from 1984 january i started learning from him officially uh, and i mm-hmm. uh, still remember his first few words he asked me to play and i played whatever i could and then then he said that if you want to learn from me and this is a subject which is very traditional and not very easy to acquire so you have to show immense sincerity and uh, discipline and all these things so if you can do it and for now you have to give me 2 hours of practice every day if you don't practice i will immediately know that you are not practicing so if you can do that then you are most welcome i will be your guru so i was uh, totally into it and his personality and the way he spoke and everything was so overwhelming i was totally into it and personally i am a very teacher oriented uh, guy like if somebody gives me an assignment and tells me you have 10 days to complete it i will complete it in 8 days so i am like that so immediately it worked you know my guruji telling me that you have to play 2 hours a day so i played 2 and 1/2 hours a day so that 
i can uh, go back to him and play whatever he wants me to play so he started like that the guru shishya parampara and it was total surrender my father also told him that musically now he is yours and you can treat him like your own son and do whatever you want with him and shout at him beat him no problem but you teach him properly so that's how it started from end of 1983 or 1984 so you can imagine now now it's more than 30 years uh, with guruji and uh, So it's really a great bond with him, and at home my father was also my second guru because father, my dad, being a medical doctor, he also had a lot of knowledge of tabla, so he used to guide me as well at home. So this is how it happened basically. So uh, I would make a small interjection here uh, because you mentioned uh, that you know even though your parents were not professional musicians. Uh, they have always yeah. There's no, family. there's nobody in my family in any uh, you know, uh, father's or mother's side. No professional musicians, but very musical yeah. family. You just pick anyone; they can sing or they can uh, uh, sing one song in tune like that, or they have the sense of tal. Right. So it runs in the family, uh, music, musical family, not musicians' family, Beautiful. but musical. Family. Yeah. Because you <laughs> say so, I mean. Now that you have said it, this has been the case, I guess, with all our guests so far. Because yeah, as you said, that yeah. your generation. So yes, that is actually the case. So again, now coming to the second question. So again, I'll have to just give a slight reference to this question because uh, the Sitar Virtuoso Sri Shubhajit Mojumdar he compiled a yeah. series of interviews in a book by the name of Alap. Alap. So yes. That, yes. So that actually has interviews of. I mean, in the tabla section, uh, the series of interviews starts with Pandit Shankar Ghosh and yeah. ends with Dal. So yeah, uh, <laughs> really, uh, yeah, it was a very pleasant everyone, surprise for me when he told me that I will include that he will include my name. Yeah. Anyway, so we go on. Everyone in between honor. appears there, including Dada's guru Pandit Shankar Chatterjee. So one wow. remarkable thing that I found in Dada's interview, he said there that there was something very melodic about the playing of Ustad Karamatullah Khan Sahab. so and the same thing was said by pundit shankar chatterjee as well i would just quote in bengali and then translate what he said was uni jokhon ganer songot korten tabla ta gan hoye jeto jokhon shetarer songot korten tabla ta shetar hoye jeto so basically when he accompanied vocals the tabla became the voice when he accompanied sitar the tabla became the sitar what exactly does this mean well uh, i was not fortunate enough to Uh, see or hear him live, but I have heard many recordings from Guruji, and also, of course, examples right. from Guruji and also my father, because my father used to go to all uh, music conferences. And being a student of Karamatullah Khan Sahib, also a diehard fan of him. Actually, in those days, Karamatullah Khan Sahib in Calcutta had the same popularity like now we see Zakir Ji when he comes here, and you know it's like overwhelming popularity. Everyone following in his footsteps or trying to play a company like him. So Karamatullah Khan Sahib was like that. icon for every tabla player or budding tabla player so same happened to my guruji my dad and guruji was of course student of uh, karamatullah khan sahab so i think what they meant is later on when i grew up a little more uh, when i was mid 20s or early 30s i realized what they meant initially you don't realize these things that tabla becoming the vocal and tabla becoming the sitar I and mean, what is this i cannot understand what's happening i will sit on stage and show how much i have practiced they get they get and unless there are claps we used to count claps how many claps you got and how many you got you know like com- comparison <laughs> of claps and all those things so when we are young we are always into this and it's not wrong like when we are uh, and it's, uh, it's true for all generations when we are young we are more energetic and uh, we want to prove ourselves so that will come in nat- naturally automatically that will happen but the accompanist merging so well with the vocal is that the tabla also becomes vocal i think that will come little later and uh, karamatullah khan sahab was very successful in doing that and later on i realized the main thing that can make it happen is when you are on stage you have to forget that you are playing uh, you have to rem- or not forget you have to remember that you are not playing for yourself you are playing for the music and not for the audience you are playing only for the music so your job is to make the music better whatever it is vocal instrumental dance anything and you have to be really? a musical support to the artist you are playing with if that gets into your mind then your total uh, approach 
as a as an accompanist right. will change automatically there it doesn't matter how much you played actually talking of this uh, one thing always comes to my mind that uh, one of my mentors ustad shahid parvez khan i have been playing with him from 2004 and all these years i played with right. him i have also learned a lot from him musically as well as philosophically once he told me kitna bajaya wo zaruri nahi hai kya bajaya wo zaruri hai so that has stuck to my mind like even stronger than fevi call <laughs> jokes apart uh, so when i go up on stage i always think this way that i have to play something that is uh, that uh, matters or something that is uh, pertaining to the music i am playing with not i am not there to show off how much tabla i know or how many jatis i have learned or how much dereket dereket i have practiced so i think uh, that is what guruji meant when he gave the example of ustad kemotullah khan sahab and that's why he was so sought after like i heard stories from guruji that when ustad amir khan sahab or balagan ali khan sahab used to get a call for concert they used to first ask the organizer pehle puchho keramat khali hai ki nahi fir hum dek denge so this is a big big thing you know big honor for the tabla player that his priority is uh, more uh, to the singer that if keramatullah khan is there with me i know that my concert will be great so this kind of confidence to have on the tabla player is like fantastic so i always try in my own way that uh, i play in such a way that i maybe can achieve at least 5 to 10% of that yeah uh, at this yeah, point we we'll just hear one small snippet of karamat khan sahab playing please please oh yeah blessing सिंपल एक्साम्पल धादा तेट धादा तेन्ना as a mm. mantra and if you practice it for years and years and years it comes out in a very different way from your own uh, essence and your own aura with it and exactly. that dhada tita changes even for the people even for the audience that they hear about and uh, i true. think this is this is the sadhana this is the level that uh, these maestros have gotten into and uh, also about the the uh, musical part that you shared earlier you know uh, uh, i mean i would just love to add a point about that even my guruji as uh, your own guruji uh, you know all of these legends uh, collectively say that when you accompany someone on the stage it is very essential to flow into each other's music uh, uh, rather than anything else and and uh, uh, to do that a tabla player has to learn music and also yeah. the 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 whatever the instrumental player or anyone has to also know some basics about tabla because uh, 
and i think me, uh, being from a musical my family this makes so much more sense to me because whenever i have accompanied my own mother in in concerts i have always known the swara sangatis where the rag goes how uh, you know how is she going to present this and i am so attracted to just listening to the rag that i forget that i am playing the tabla i am playing so exactly tabla. and exactly. you know and i'm just there following whatever the space allows me to whatever the musicality exactly. wherever it takes me to so i think that is one yeah. very uh, beautiful aspect about accompaniment that it the two should come out as one exactly, exactly. You know? and as an accompanist we have to first listen to what the uh, artist i mean uh, the town main artist is not very uh, nice uh, or doesn't explain it properly i mean we shouldn't say main artist because whoever on stage all three of us the harmonium tabla and the singer everyone is the main artist when a performance is going on sure. but uh, as an accompanist the tabla player or the harmonium player has to listen to the singer or the tabla player has to listen to the sitaris first and then merge into the music in the same way like it exactly. has to be the same river like two distributories coming in and forming a river together and then only a smooth exactly. flow will occur otherwise there will be always clashes in between exactly yeah. and i think yeah. this makes a, a perfect base to the next question that uh, we are going to have on this uh, uh, conversation uh, your guruji pandit uh, shankar chatterji ji has learned from two distinct lineages of uh, tabla oh, exactly. and uh, legendaries ustad uh, karamatullah khan sahab and ustad alara khan sahab right. uh, so as a lay person uh, the styles of these great legends sound very different from each other uh mm-hmm. but i'm i'm sure as you know as music comes together <laughs> some or the other way uh, there is a common ground for their musical aesthetics so uh how did your guru uh, try to unite those two styles of playing under a single uh, baj or uh, yeah. you know style if i would say it's a very very good question actually i think uh, nobody has asked, asked me this before and actually very few people know uh, that he has learned from all these two maestros he's maybe the only one a uh, living uh, senior tabla player now in india who has learned from two maestros of uh, india yeah. and also he has uh, he was the gandaband shagrid of ustad masid khan sahab who was the who was the father of ustad karamadullah khan sahab so masid khan sahab started the farukabad gharana in kolkata so he was the first one to arrive in kolkata uh, after the partition and all anyway so actually it's a uh, we are also lucky to be his students uh, because guruji taught us two gharanas parallelly and he also demonstrated how uh, the two gharanas can come and meet at one point and also how separate they are like very few uh, like common technical examples are like tete in in farukabad we are playing tete starting with the index finger and in punjab gharana most of the time tete is played starting with the uh, sorry in farukabad we start with the middle finger and in punjab gharana most of the times it starts with the index finger reverse tete so these are some right. technical differences and uh, in farukabad gharana the compositions are uh, mostly in a symmetrical manner like this kaida he was playing just now we heard the recording da tere ganada kare nakti dada kare nak din na kare nak da tere kare da kare nakti dada kare nak din na kare nak aur da tere kare de titta ke na dati ke na tin na ke na da tere kare de titta ke na dati ke na din na ke na dati da ke na da tere kare dati da ke tin like this yeah okay right uh, whereas uh, there are many compositions uh, in punjab gharana i mean in farukabad gharana you won't find so many compositions that are very mathematically challenging but the right. bowls are very rich i mean lot That's of terikete and dhignag and dhere dhere these these are there so they are more rich right. in the bowl structure but in punjab gharana uh, the mathematics has come in so beautifully and i think also it was an introduction of abba ji he was lo- influenced a lot from the carnatic Uh, rhythm uh, structures and he introduced so much uh, logical mathematics into tabla that it was an eye opener for all tabla players who can understand or who could understand and uh, right. my guruji always used to say that if abba ji didn't or if abba ji wasn't born or if abba ji wasn't uh, there in the tabla world maybe we wouldn't have been able to play jhaptal uh, and nine beats and 11 beats and all these beats so easily true True. So his style was an eye opener for everyone to play other kinds of beats like fractional beats and all like da 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 din na 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 
ഫ്രാൻസിലാ <laughs> <laughs> that was the very basic fact that everyone was used to da kat tak din na da din na din din da ti da da din na giran da din na da tak din din da ti and suddenly da 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 din na gena da ti da gena da ti na gena da ti da gena da ti na gena da 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 din na da ti da gena da ti na gena gena da ti da gena da ti din na gena da 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 so everyone was thrown off their seats i mean everyone was hiding their hands when giving the tal because nobody could understand what is going on <laughs> so it was difficult to accept him initially and then finally when he went to the rela part then people was like oh wow fantastic they get all this but face card wise nobody could understand so one basic difference between these two garanas is this like the mathematical uh, thinking the mathematical thinking part like also abaji has uh, the famous rela ിയൻസ്റ്റാൻഡ് <laughs> but here in north india True. we are used to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 we are not used to 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 not very much uh. we are not used to how it is a different story but think about 60 years ago we weren't used right. to so much maths so that is one okay. basic difference between the two maestros and uh, uh, thanks to both of them that uh, we have so much richness Uh, in tabla and all the other maestros who have uh, enriched tabla so much and talking of this my guruji is a sangam of two gharanas and he has exactly. very unique uh, compositions kaida relas and uh, i try to present them whenever i get a solo uh, con- uh, performance uh, because in india uh, you are not invited to play solo uh, unless you have gray hair <laughs> that is a very unfortunate <laughs> thing that is a big irony that by the time you have become a senior and then you are uh, then people realize that oh we should invite san so for tabla solo because he has so much knowledge but uh, by the time maybe the speed and the tayari has gone out from the hand anyway that's a different story so uh, uh, so guruji taught me a rela which is a which is a very good example of uh, right. i was just going to am i going to two garanas like the rela goes like this it's totally based on abba ji da din tak te da din tak tak te da tak te da din tak tak te da din da tak te da din da ti da tak te da din da tak te da din da ti da tak te da so this is the rela and then the rela is getting filled up with terekete and terekete right. is there in both gharanas but there are some terekete uh, uh, type of terekete that is a speciality of fadukabad uh, right. gharana and some are specialties of punjab gharana for example dhatre garinak dignak is farukabad garana totally dhatre garinak dinkare garinak is farukabad or lucknow that style a dhatre kete tak tere kete is more punjab so this rela when he was filling it up da din dat ke da din dar din din ra to dhatre garinak dignak at the end da din dat ke da din da dhatre garinak dignak da din dat ke da din dhatre garinak dhatre garinak dignak ka tin dat ke da din ിങ്ങ് <laughs> 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 
So at this point, wow. I guess we'll Perfect. watch two videos on the trot. Both are short. Firstly, we'll just listen to a snippet of Abaji, and then we'll move on to this trailer, which Dada performs by calling it the bucket trailer because in a bucket, <laughs> like water. Yeah, I explained it that way. And Kerala. <laughs> no, I had to explain it that way because it was uh, this concert was in Canada in Toronto. So there, uh, sometimes I mean, uh, we have to explain it in a certain way that the audience understands why this is happening. So I explained it as bucket trailer. It's like the terikete is like water. You are pouring one mug after the other. So da din da chike da din da chike da chike da chike da din da chike da din da chike da chike da chike da like that. So it's called the bucket trailer. <laughs> That's my yeah, interpretation. Makes much more sense. <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess uh, yeah. We'll just move to the two videos on the trot. Yeah. So. Uh huh. सवारी कांग And now yeah, we yeah, move yeah, on yeah. to the part where the two ustads yeah. come together. Yeah, so here is the <laughs> bucket trailer. <laughs> Slowly, like as if you are adding mugs of water into the bucket. Da, din, da, da, din. Da, 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 din, da, 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 din, da, 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 din, da, da,
क्या बात है क्या बात है क्या बात है अमेजिंग अमेजिंग या एवरीथिंग द इज गुरु जी इज दैट वाज फाइन ब्यूटीफुल सो द हाउ द बायर जस्ट जस्ट यू नो यू नो लाइक वाटर माय गुरु जी ऑलवेज इज टू से अ मार्क ऑफ अ रिफाइंड तबला प्लेयर is how good his baya sounds and not the tabla <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he used to and yeah. beautiful i mean of course i'm a very you know uh, uh, i'm a rookie in that case but uh, uh, beautiful <laughs> it's just so musical it comes out so musically even if those bowls and the mathematics in it is technical but there is a way to make it way more musical than in what it appears to yeah. and um, that's actually uh, uh, this is a result of uh, this is a result of i think constant hammering in my mind from guruji and my father both that put melody first put melody first although tabla is a percussion instrument that but tabla has a melody also so you have to put the melody first and then the technical aspects and speed and everything later so because anyone who's listening to because it's a sound basically it's a sound so anyone who's listening to sound will be attracted if the sound is good if the sound is not good then the listener will not be uh, will not be attracted it is the same for vocal also so i think uh, that was a hallmark of kiramatullah khan sir and being a guruji student and also uh, my father's vocal tonic so i always put melody first and uh, thankfully people are liking it enjoying it so i think that makes my effort worthwhile but Definitely. the riyas the speed and the technical aspects are as important as uh, the melody 100%. definitely yeah. definitely uh, so before yeah. moving on to the next question i will just take a quick look at the comment section uh, there is sharojit da thank you so much for tuning in dada sharojit da for those who do not know is a brilliant brilliant sitar player uh, sharojit uh, oh acha from delhi yes okay sharojit yes fantastic sitar is yeah. there is shrimati sabita das sutar thank you so much sabita ji for tuning in there is shrimati ankita shah thank you so much uh, we are really trying our best she says it's a great initiative by you but so again thank you there is mr keshav rupai who is watching from shanghai so thank you so oh, much oh exactly keshav, keshav is my student <laughs> that is yeah. fantastic there is smita sharma ji thank you so much for tuning in arpan mahajan ji bina desai ji abhinay ji thank you so much everyone uh, there is shomu ji da again a fantastic sitar player oh yeah uh, shomu ji yes okay. Uh, so one of my favorites from the younger generation somojit fantastic yeah, sitar really good he's really good uh, so it seems like the... a lot of people have joined yeah yeah, uh, yeah so say. moving on to the next question uh, as students of music during talim or during practice or during random moments in life we come across something and we kind of think like okay i have never thought of it this way before and going forward i am never going to look at music the same way again something has completely changed what are some such moments for you well, well uh, in a way uh, what, what we want to me what we want to ask you is uh, there are some turning points in a musician's life whether it may be from a guru's perspective or uh, self realizations on the path of music where yeah. one day you just wake up differently one day yeah. you don't see your music as uh okay the audio what happened the virus might have faced an interruption in the connection but uh okay. yeah that's basically the thing i mean yeah yeah Yeah, by turning yeah. point we don't mean turning point in musical career but turning no. point in musical realization or everything yeah, yeah. i mean the, this question can be an, uh, answered in many ways actually musically 
professionally personally there there can be many aspects but let me start uh, musically from uh, my childhood uh, when i good here oh am i back yeah yeah you are back yeah oh i'm sorry did i interrupt something no 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 i uh, i was already i already started answering the question i'm saying that this question can be answered in many aspects like musically personally professionally lot of aspects are there so uh, right. turning points in my career like uh, anirban said but that's not the uh, what we want to hear here but uh, musically i would say uh, as a teenager the impact the first impact on me was very important i will never forget that day like i started learning from uh, from my guruji as i said uh, late 83 or early 1984 and uh, so tabla was just a pair of drums for me i didn't know what i can do with it or where will this take me basically it was like practicing dada tete dada tunna dada tete dada tete dada and uh, submitting the homework every week to guruji same it was same like submitting the homework in school but what or where will tabla take me there had to be some vision or somebody Uh, to influence me because when i started learning with guruji guruji was uh, not uh, performing so much in kolkata and he was also very busy traveling to europe uh, and also teaching uh, as a professor in rabindra bharat university so uh, when i joined guruji i didn't get him so much as a performer but guruji used to give examples of all the uh, great performers from his times and also seniors so through stories i had learned about them but uh, it was 1987 and uh, abba ji was in town in kolkata and playing a duet with zakir ji abba ji and zakir ji and uh, uh, that afternoon guru ji uh, called me and some uh, other family members to his house because i was very close by he called me subo can you come abba ji is here uh, at my place i said yeah, yeah i will definitely come then uh, again he called me 10 minutes later and he said that Uh, not only abba ji is here zakir ji is also coming uh, for lunch zakir ji is also coming same day and that same evening they were performing at ramkrishna mission gol park so i immediately ran because it was a rare opportunity abba ji uh, my guru ji's guru and also zakir ji and uh, i have never seen him in front so i just ran in whatever i was wearing uh, just put on a decent shirt and ran and uh, then evening i where he told me that you go and attend the concert i am not able to uh, go tonight but uh, you go and just go in i will tell the organizer you can go and listen to them because you are learning from me punjab gharana but you also have to listen to how it is presented in the highest form so listen go and listen to my ustad ji and also his son zakir ji so that day when i went and listen to ustad ji and zakir ji i could feel that where tabla can take me if i am sincere and if i uh, am obedient to my guruji and if i practice well uh, i had that vision that uh, by just playing classical tabla somebody can reach this level uh, so i should also give it a try so that was one turning point for me musically that tabla was after that tabla was not just dada tete dada tunna and dada tete dada tete for me it totally changed my way of looking at it and uh, really thankful to guru ji that he sent me to that concert that day and uh, another uh, turning point later when i was in uh, jalapur university i was doing my maths uh, bachelor degree and later i finished masters degree from there so in jalapur university i was part of that uh, uh, cultural team and we used to arrange a festival every year and our job was to look after the classical section and that day in those days classical music used to happen in universities of kolkata but now i think uh, the taste has changed a lot we don't see so many classical programs in colleges and universities here so i remember uh, we had this lineup sanjukta panigrahi odissi dancer uh, ustad ashish khan with uh, bigomda uh, pandit bigram ghosh uh, that time and uh, bikram da was on tabla with ustad ashish khan and then uh, last item was ustad rashid khan with tanmoy da on tabla so that time i remember bikram da uh, was one of the best tabla players uh, mathematically 
oriented. I mean, of course, Riyaz and all these things were definitely there, but thinking, mathematical thinking, Bikramda was an example in those days. So that night, when I heard Bikramda and uh, Ashish Khan Sahib, musically, it was a lesson for me. Like the concept of Mukam totally became clear in front of my eyes. What is Mukam and how you can land on the Mukam without uh, making it too much complicated. So that is another turning point for me, listening to Bikramda that night. And then uh, later on, uh, when I heard, when growing up, I heard accompaniment of vocal. Guruji always used to tell me that unless a tabla player can accompany vocal music properly, he cannot become a good tabla player. Because vocal accompaniment with vocal music requires two things mainly. One is patience. And number two is musicality. So unless you have achieved or obtained patience and musicality, you cannot become a good tabla player or a good accompanist. So Kermadullah Khansa was, a, of course, an example. But I never heard him live. So in those days, the two best vocal accompanists of Kolkata, Pondit Samur Shah and Pondit Anandogopal Mandopadhyay, they were the two doyens of vocal accompaniment and uh, I, I learned a lot of things from their vocal accompaniment like patience and restraint, how much uh, to play and what not to do when you are playing with vocal and those helped me. I still remember a lot of things when I am on stage. Uh, those things are all stored in our uh, supercomputer which is our brain and they come up when needed. So those things helped me a lot. So these are musical turning points and I started understanding the concept of Sangat. And then later on, uh, when I started playing with Usta Chait Parvizji in 2004, he opened up another uh, window of Laikari, uh, which is unparalleled. I mean, uh, if you don't learn that by sitting with him and doing Riyaz with him, you will not be able to imbibe that in your playing. So uh, in that way, he is also one of my gurus, like uh, when it comes to Laikari and uh, mathematics, dealing uh, Tal in a different way. Like Japtal is not always 2, 3, 2, 3. Or Rupak is not always 3 plus 4. It can be something else also. It can be uh, 4.5 plus 2.5. Or it can be uh, 5.5 plus 1.5. Or Japtal can be 1.5 plus 3 plus something in fractions. So all these things uh, started opening up. So these are all... I can say musically turning points in my career. I am really blessed that I uh, could come across all these great musicians. Of course, my Guruji was always there as an umbrella. And whenever I faced any difficulty or any question came to my mind, always went and asked him. And he always used to say that if you have any question, come and ask me. It can be anything like some other gharana, someone uh, playing something that you haven't learned or it doesn't belong to my gharana. Don't try it yourself. Come and ask me. And Karamatullah Khan Sahib also told him the same thing. Abbaji also told him the same thing. He said that don't try yourself. Like it is dangerous because if you play it wrong, then that will stick to you all your life and it will be difficult to again uh, repair it. But nowadays, uh, like maybe we can come to this discussion later. Like so much thing is available online that sometimes students, they don't ask. They think that they can learn it by looking at the video or something. And by the time they come to me, and ask me, they have done everything wrong. So it takes another two months to repair it or maybe more. So in that way, uh, those are turning points in my life, like Guruji's uh, uh, suggestions and then watching Abbaji and Zakirji in Kolkata first time, then listening to Sangat by these two Pandits, Samardha and Anandogopal uncle. Then later on, uh, my association with Usta Shahid Parvezji, which is still going on. And then a lot of contemporary musicians think who think out of the box. Somewhere last week, right? I just yeah, played with him on 26th March in Kolkata, Rajya Sangeet Chambalan. That was a big concert. Uh, so also my some of my contemporary musicians, my friends who think out of the box, like playing with them or discussing with them, like uh, Sandeep Chatterjee, uh, one of the names, who is a Santur player. Uh, he also thinks out of the box. And not only classical music, other forms of music, uh, uh, like uh, Pandit Ajay Chakravarti ji once said, uh, music is of two types, good and bad. So the bad music, you have to throw it away. But good music can be so many things. Not only Indian classical, semi-classical, film, 
folk, uh, other genres. So if it appeals to you, that means it has to be good music. Otherwise, you cannot it cannot appeal another musician. So these are the things. And then uh, uh, if I say uh, musically, not musically, like uh, professionally, uh, there was one time where uh, in Kolkata or in India in general, uh, people used to look for budding artists. Like, okay, let's go and find out who's coming up or who is showing promise. Uh, that was one point. Uh, when I was a teenager or in my 20s, that used to happen. Like there were many small, small concerts happening, Baitaks and all small concerts where uh, it was a platform for many of us. And talking of this, even my father did one uh, series of concerts for 10, 11 years for upcoming artists where many of uh, the uh, musicians of my age who are perf still performing now, they had their debut in Kolkata. So those used to happen. Uh, so those are also turning points in my career in many others' careers. And uh, another professionally, I will say, a turning point, a big turning point happened to me uh, when I uh, played with Shahid Ji first time in Rovaldin Music Conference in 2009. Because when you are playing in other concerts which are smaller in size, uh, the audience is limited and uh, the publicity is also not so much. Uh, so you reach out to lesser people. But when you play with an Ustad in a big conference, uh, maybe you are playing the same thing because you don't change overnight. Suddenly, you don't become a great tabla player in one week. You are playing the same thing. But when you are playing with an Ustad, it reaches out to more people worldwide. So that was also a turning point in my career. And... Some other aspects are also there, like that I look into music, where I used to look into music in a certain way, but now, uh, considering the present scenario, a lot of things have changed. Uh, some uh, negative aspects also have creeped in, where sometimes the quality takes the back seat, some other things take the front seat. All these things are there, but uh, let's not discuss about those things because, uh, I mean, the more we talk about negativity, we are also filled with negativity. Uh, so all these things, there are changes in the society, of course, That's in true. all aspects. So those also affect <clears throat> music and those also affect the professionalism. Uh, young uh, musicians nowadays uh, have to calculate or have to uh, think in a different way than we thought. So a lot of things are changing. But of course, I mean, uh, classical music and good quality music will always get positive response from everywhere. That is the only belief or that is the only confidence we should have in ourselves that no matter what, if the level of music or the quality of music that we present is superlative or even close to superlative, then that definitely that will strike a bell and definitely uh, people will love the performance. So uh, we should always aim definitely. towards that. Yeah. Definitely. I think I think I've uh, heard an Ustad say that if... Uh, your music is, or, or I think if, if music in general becomes stagnant, then that's a problem. But if it is changing, yeah. if it is evolving, it is, mm. uh, it is always going to produce new waves of musicians, new waves of uh, creativity within itself. And uh, exactly. that's, a, that's a natural yeah, law. Of why no nature, more right? new waves, please? <laughs> no, 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 new waves, as in, I mean, I won't recommend the, yeah, I mean, a lot of things are not not uh, praiseworthy, of course, a lot of things are happening. But actually, we are talking about this. My Guruji once told me that Keramatullah Khan Sahib actually passed away in 1977. So even uh, before that, like 20 years before that, maybe in, in the 50s, on early 60s, he once told Guruji that Tabla abhi tak aadha bhi nahi hua. Iska bahut kuch baki hai. Tum log aage leke jau. Uske baad ye bahut aage jane wala hai. Aur bahut kuch baki hai Tabla mein abhi. So he could foresee that tabla is just not a, just a rela or a kaida or a tukra chakradar. Tabla has a big horizon. And I think uh, the best example for that later on is, of course, our one and only Zakir Ji. Because he took tabla to the entire universe in a different way. And classically as well as non-classically. Even now, there are so many examples that tabla is being used in other genres. So uh, in a good way. Of course, to, pre to present your art in another genre or mix with other genres, you have to be very sound and well-trained in your own genre. Otherwise, uh, it cannot be done properly. 
and plus you have to have respect for that other genre also you have to have at least some knowledge of that other genre you are uh, like uh, mixing with otherwise it can't be done properly but of course yeah music will change it is an ever changing subject if if it becomes stagnant then it cannot be called a creative art so it has to change exactly. it exactly. has to change That's so what you said just now leads very beautifully to the next question tejuru bhai exactly yes 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 that's what uh, i was going to get at uh, because i think uh, even uh, uh, you know as being uh, uh, so, you know juniors in this uh, particular sense of art uh, even we have seen this uh, particular art go through some changes we have uh, we have been very fortunate to hear maestros from the earlier generation as well as our generation and mm. uh, we can see a, a stag a, you know a steady change in the in the thinking in the uh, in the acceptance of the instrument worldwide in, in fact you know of course uh, we all uh, owe it to zakir ji a lot for the uh, you know for the globalization of this particular instrument actually uh, uh, also before him like zakir ji was the second step i think the first step uh, we should uh be yeah. uh, totally uh, thankful to is pandit ravi shankar ustad ali abbas khan sir these people because they started definitely. the global generation and zakir ji like took it forward to another level took it forward definitely definitely that is definitely right so the tabla as a as a instrument has undergone so many changes in the last 50 to 60 years it uh, it's uh, you know uh, just developing from an instrument to an instrument who is capable of uh, accompanying uh, so many genres then just yeah. for uh, particularly for classical music and then uh, you know now it has taken shape uh, in so many universal forms like it it is played with fusion music it is played with symphonies and yeah. uh, what not it, it has just created a blast uh, you know and, exactly. and it has over exceeded its capacity to uh, you know and and i think the players or anyone who has been trying to be creative with this art has explored more and more in in yeah. you know uh, in that sense so uh, you know with the under the major changes that the instrument has undergone both in the solo format and the accompanying format Uh, yeah. do you feel yourself the need to present uh, what you have learned in a way that differs from your talim or uh, or at least in certain yeah on from your talim or as okay. at least in certain aspects uh, and if so if how do you think today's needs can be balanced with traditional teaching methods okay very good question actually uh, uh, the changes creep in whenever uh, the barriers are broken so 100 years ago or 70 years ago it was a different story like tabla was only in india right or even in india benaras tabla was only in benaras punjab tabla was only in punjab like uh, farukabad tabla was only in farukabad or in kolkata people didn't used to travel also so much so it was very rare that some ustad or some pandit from one city is going to another city uh, to perform so once the global barrier started opening and the intermixing of cultures started happening so this was bound to happen because uh, we know the theory charles darwin said the survival of the fittest so if you have to survive you have to adapt to the given situation so tabla had to also go through these changes otherwise it will not survive like pakhawaj with due respect pakhawaj couldn't adapt to those changes as much as tabla did that's why pakhawaj is still played only with drupad dhamar pakhawaj is not used for uh, thumri or for jazz or any other so uh, but tabla could adapt to other forms and we are thankful to those maestros who showed the path uh, that tabla can be used with other genres so the more the globalization happened like as a musician if uh, say for example ravi shankar ji uh, uh, and yudhi menuhin the famous recording where uh, yudhi menuhin being a western classical violinist he was playing all the raga all the compositions and uh, all the bandishes that ravi shankar ji taught him and together they are performing and yudhi menuhin was playing violin and indian bandishes but the tonal quality was totally western because that was his originality and with the sitar is sounded amazing so that was one kind of about breaking the boundary and with them ustad allar ka khansa was on tabla so when maybe he was playing the tabla with them sometimes he played pure theka and sometimes maybe he was trying to do something else which 
is more befitting with that with the violin music so that's how the thought process started so once the uh, windows start opening you have to think if you are not uh, if you keep your windows closed like there is a very uh, wonderful quote from uh, kavi guru rabindranath tagore that uh, if you keep your uh, windows closed and you avoid the truth then you are uh, not letting yourself to develop so music is the same thing like you have to open the windows to all different kinds of genres and that will help That's you true. to uh, create more so dhate te dhate te dada and all the traditional things they have been already played and they have been already played in such a level that we cannot even reach that level forget about playing better than them okay so then what else can be done with tabla because tabla has so much such a wide range of sound dynamics how can we use it so our seniors starting from ustad zaki ji he has showed us how to uh, use different sound dynamics of both the right hand and the left hand and then the other maestros pandit kumar bos ji sapan ji anduda they have all collaborated with other musicians and all of these are all of them are maestros so that brought in the different changes but the classical tabla has remained has stayed as classical tabla is still now classical tabla and uh, talking about the adaptations we have to make when performing if you are performing say in a tabla festival or if you are performing in a in sawai gandhar festival or if you are performing in saptak there you don't have to change the format because there all the listeners are all connoisseurs and they have come to listen to pure classical music so there you have to present the classical music in the traditional format otherwise uh, Uh, people will think that you don't have proper talim or you don't know the actual classical tabla but in some cases where there is mixed audience or sometimes in the western countries when we are touring and like this bucket rela when i if i play that in kolkata i don't have to say that this is bucket rela and you are feeling the teregete and all these things you don't have to say that because people will immediately understand that okay it's going like this but for the sake of connecting to the audience sometimes we have to perform the traditional things in a little different way uh, like there are examples of like ustad uh, pandit samta prasad ji used to play dhere dhere and he used to say that this is the train going dhere 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 and then now it is crossing a level crossing so the dhere 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 more volume and then the uh, swan is walking on the water all these things sound effects so later on zakir ji also used to dekh sakta kata ke din and he is giving a story of uh, radha waiting for krishna and when krishna comes radha is asking where were you dekh sakta kata ke din i was standing here for so long nagadev i will not talk to you so all these things you know so for a layman when he is listening to the story he is enjoying it and then when we are actually playing the dekh sakta kata ke din he is visualizing the story and that's helping me uh, helping him to enjoy a classical tradition like 100 years old classical tradition in a new way and when he goes back home he will fall in love with the classical format that oh there ekta ka kata ke ek din i heard it so it is like that radha is waiting and krishna is coming so it was so nice yeah? so he will never forget that there ekta ka but if you go and now says a tukra there ekta ka kata ke ek din nagade kata gintaran so he is not understanding anything so he will forget after the concert is over he will also forget and he will go and listen to uh are you seeing or shriya goshal or mika singh uh, you know so uh, nowadays when there is so much invasion from other genres and you just turn on the radio or tv there is hardly any classical music it's all fm is full of bollywood or and then uh, coke studio or mtv and all these things so the classical musician has a lot of responsibility that he has to present the pure form in an attractive way and how that he has to decide and if he is intelligent enough he will be able to do it uh, so in those cases we have to change our presentation a bit for example uh, there is one youtube clip of mine where, or youtube video where i played tisra jati uh, but i named it mix in six okay and uh, basically the laikari is uh, taken from punjab gharana da din tak 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 ta din tak 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 da din tak 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 ta 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 so dati gene dati gene dene dati gene dati gene dene dati gene 7 plus 
This is the Rela, basically. But I named it Mix in Six and then I started uh, the introduction as a uh, Cuban uh, triplet format. Like, tick, 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 tack, tack, tick, tick, tick. So that was played little bit on Cajon, little bit on Khanjira. And then I came into the tabla. Then the tabla comes in. So if somebody who doesn't know tabla is some from other genre is listening to this, he will enjoy that rhythm thinking of something else. Maybe he is familiar to that Cuban rhythm or if he, maybe he is familiar to that Latin rhythm. So once he is familiar to that rhythm, then he will pay attention. Otherwise, he will not pay attention. If you just say this is Tisra Jati from Punjab Gharana, and that's it. Because he doesn't know Tisra Jati, the name. He doesn't know Punjab Gharana if he is from Africa. So he will like, oh, forget it, man. This is different music. So he will just <laughs> move it aside. So our job now is more difficult. Uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, it wasn't so difficult because mainstream music was classical music. Now there is so much happening that sometimes we have to present classical music in a commercial with a commercial brain. And a lot of people are doing that very successfully. But uh, there is a very fine balance between how you are presenting like the classical thing in a commercial way. If you can maintain that balance, you are successful. But as I told you, solid talim is needed. The talim has to be there. If the talim is not there, then it is totally shallow. You won't be able to proceed after two minutes. If the talim is there, like I have seen videos of Zakir Ji uh, playing in uh, Monterey Jazz Festival. Alone on the stage with two, three tablas and surrounded by uh, maybe thousand people. Maybe they are seeing tabla for the first time. And he is playing. Traditional Punjab drama kaida. Dati ke dete te kete ke dete te dati da ke tina ke na dati da ke dati da ke tina ke na dati ke dete te kete ke dete te dati da ke tina ke na dati da ke. He is playing that kaida. But before going into the kaida, what he is doing, that is the lesson. After he is gone into the kaida, dati ke dete te kete ke dete te dati da ke tina ke na. That everyone can do. I mean, not everyone. I mean, everyone knows what can be done with that. But before that, that you are saying that this is Punjab drama kaida, traditional kaida. How I can attract somebody into it that he will sit and listen for the next half an hour. That is the mastery and that is the talim and that is the thought. And that is why uh, maybe he is great. He is so great or that is why we look up to him when we think of globalizing the music or when we think of playing with other genres. So he could successfully adapt himself. I mean, you have to, when you are there, okay. when you are in Africa and you are playing in front of African musicians or when you are in some other country playing in front of them. You have to become one of them. Like they say, when in yeah. Rome, be like a Roman. So when you are in some other country, you have to first become one of them. Zakirji said that, that if you want to learn South Indian That's music true. properly, you have to go and stay in South Indian in that heat and eat idli and eat their, uh, the curd, the sour curd yeah. and practice <laughs> with them. Otherwise, it will not happen. You cannot sit in the AC and immediately learn all the uh, korvai and everything. So you have to go and go through the same process of learning process. Otherwise, it will not happen. Similarly, yes. when you are in China and you, are, you want to play something that appeals the Chinese people, you have to become Chinese there mentally. Right. But when you are playing That's in true. front of traditional audience, learned audience, it is not needed. You, you have, yeah. Sometimes you don't have to announce also what you are playing. You just keep on playing. So these adaptations have to be made. I also do it. Other musicians also do it. Depends on how well you do it. The better you do it, the more you are accepted in a mixed audience. That's the thing. That's true. But it's not easy. As I told you, it's not easy. And of course, talim is needed. And you have to have an open mind, uh, open mindset, like ready to change. That's true. <clears throat> definitely. I think that uh, uh, ready to adapt should be a more. Uh, yeah. You know, def <laughs> definitely. And <laughs> right, balance is the key. I selected a Khanda Jati Rela for a very specific reason. Because a very similar Khanda Jati Rila we will now see being played by Dada. But present oh. is a very different fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's also, yeah, exactly. So these are all, I mean, these are not nothing uh, mine. These have been done already. I mean, in, in no question of surpassing them. We draw uh, inspiration from all these things. Everything has been played. Mukam, Jati, um, High Speed Rila, 
everything has been played we cannot do anything beyond them we are just you know pouring old wine in a new bottle basically is basically that right. so yeah. we are just trying to follow the footsteps and instead of dhoti uh, tying the dhoti we are wearing a dhoti with elastic so that it doesn't fall off it's like that ready made dhoti <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> this track is named High on Five. Uh, High on Five. Wow. Eleven minute track, which I had kind of uh, edited out to make it. I mean, to get the essence in six minutes. But please check out the complete track on the other's YouTube channel. Yeah, it's one of my very favorite tracks. I created it with a lot of passion, and one of my friends in Toronto, Ed Hanley, he helped me with the video ed or editing and recording. So basically, it is Khanda Jati. But if I write Khanda Jati, a lot of people will just scroll through. So I wrote high on five, so that five is there, and if you get high, you still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I Amazing. Mean, so uh, after this, I mean, I have one small question, but let's first watch the video. Okay. Okay. Taka taki te, taka taki, taka taki te, taka taki te, kanda cha. तक तक इते खंड जाती खंड जाती खंड तक तक खंड जाती तक तक इते तक तक इते तक तक इते तक तक इते खंड जाती तक तक इते 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 खंड जाती खंड जाती
क्या बात है क्या बात है वाह ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल ना आई शुड आल्सो मेंशन दैट आई एम आल्सो अ लॉट इन्फ्लुएंस्ड एंड इंट्रिग्ड बाय द कर्नाटिक रिदम स्ट्रक्चर एंड आई हैव आल्सो टेकन लिटिल बिट ऑफ ट्रेनिंग फ्रॉम सम ऑफ द great players from there and uh, whenever i have met them i had the opportunity to play with them also like uh, many of them uh, including uh, patri ji then viku uh, uh, no not viku ji i forgot his name though uh, like three four of them and uh, also i collaborated many times like when with shashank ji flute player shashank ji and uh, shahid ji and played a very uh, or maybe the only duet with yu shrinivas ji and i was very fortunate to be the tabla player there with shahid ji and yu shrinivas ji i still have the recording it's like a big thing for me when he passed away i was so heartbroken like one of my favorite musicians so south indian rhythm structure uh, interests me attracts me a lot so sometimes uh, i listen to them and try to imbibe some of this so in this in this video there was one tehai tak tak tita 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 this is totally from carnatic system and uh, the last there also tak tak tita 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 da da tak tak tita tak tak tita da da one two the gap coming at the end these uh, are from abba ji of course but a uh, lot of carnatic influence uh, is there anyway so i tried in my own way I'm glad that people are enjoying it. <laughs> It's very beautiful. So I have a very stupid question regarding this yeah. track. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why I say stupid? Because in this track you made very beautiful use of the fact that the two words "khanda jati" itself is mm. in "khanda jati." Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I just realized it during the recording. And I, yeah, I have a habit of rhyming with words. Like if you give me some words, I can uh, make a. Uh, kaida out of it in tin tal or jab tal so it's like my childhood habit or hobby maybe rhyming with words or putting a some sentence into a beat so if you say khand jati it is khand jati but if you say khand jati then it is totally khand jati like five khand jati khand jati khand jati so then uh, me and that guy ed we were just uh, doing some rhythmic patterns with verbally with khanda jati then i thought that why not incorporate that into the recording and it turned out really well khanda jati jati just saying jati at the end 1 2 3 jati 1 2 3 jati <laughs> so that was just done playfully but it turned out really well like when we were editing it uh, we thought let's do it and if you don't like it we can uh, like uh, delete it but it came out so well and we thought okay let's leave it because it's a kind of a new thing and i purposely didn't use any lehra because once you use lehra it becomes very indian if you want to present it for a global audience you have to leave it just percussion like only with percussion like so tabla was the main frame percussion and i used uh, udu and little bit of voice and uh, khanjira also and uh, i also played little kahon it was not there in the video but uh, only percussion just percussion no lehra or no other melody so because percussion itself can create lot of melodies if uh, used properly so that was the main idea now time for the stupid question because you said yeah. you have this habit of doing things what would you do if it were mishra jati instead i didn't think <laughs> i have to when i do mishra jati <laughs> yeah good question mishra jati so mishra jati can fall into yeah. mishra jati which So I have to do something. Let me. Yeah, it's a good thing. So when I do Mr. Jati, I'll definitely think about it. Maybe Mr. Jati, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Jati. Fantastic. Yeah, Mr. Jati, Mr. Yeah, what a joke. Maybe the next question. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Actually, talking of seven, like uh, many times when uh, I uh, try to work with. uh now just uh, just uh, i'm just interrupting a little bit funny story many times when i try to uh, when i work with western musicians uh, they are more used to 3 4 or 6 8 and 4 4 so sometimes those who are not uh, exposed to the indian rhythm structure there are some jazz drummers who are extremely well they can play khanda jati even better 
than Indian uh, tabla players sometimes because they have you know all these components that they can play the micro beats very easily uh, when a drummer is playing. So uh, there have there have been many funny encounters. One was like really funny. I still remember it. So it was seven, like tin tin na din na din na tin tin na din na din na something like that. Deep chandi da din da da tin. So I was trying to explain, and he wasn't able to count like tin tin na din na din na. So he wasn't getting a equal bar, you know. So he was always doing tin tin na din na din na tin tin na din na tin na din na tin na. So I had a hard time of bringing him back to like seven. So these concepts are a clash also when you work with Western musicians. But uh, just a funny story. I am not demeaning. I am not making them look s- small, the Western musicians. But this is just a matter of concept. Like if a tabla player is playing with a jazz drummer, the jazz drummer will break the eight in such a way. Sometimes we are clueless. You know. So those yeah. that also happens. Exactly. Yeah. He is breaking the eight in such a way. Suddenly, a th- so from nowhere. Uh, hi hat comes in so it's difficult to sometimes follow so same thing like uh, seven or five for them maybe those who are not exposed to it it can be difficult to follow anyways right <laughs> i have an idea about the mishra jati though <laughs> in the, you know you can uh, do something like this <laughs> where you can explain uh, you know it can be a very general video explaining what mishra jati is and you can also do something like this is mishra jati this is mishra jati <laughs> something like that you are explaining this is that. mishra jati this is mishra jati this is mishra <laughs> oh, welcome to mishra jati welcome to mishra jati welcome to mishra jati yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah Great. can be done <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Anjuman bhai, uh, do you want me to pr- proceed to the next one? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> so, uh, Dada yeah, has yeah, already yeah. given Great. more than so, half the answer, you know, but this... let's finish this. Yeah. Right. Actually, I think uh, 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 I think he has actually given an. Yes, yes, yes. So I can we can proceed I think we to can... your next let's question. Proceed, yeah. So this yeah. is something. I mean, uh, as soon as I found out about this, I have been very fascinated by the fact that dada is also a master's degree holder in applied mathematics so that <laughs> is a very deep personal connection so on that note how yeah, i think you are also yeah. anirban is also into yeah yeah so um, how do you advocate a serious academic pursuit by students of music in the present day in fields other than music well uh, education is very important in everybody's life and doesn't matter what you are doing in later in your later life uh, basic education uh, at least up to grade 12 or even more uh, i mean after grade 12 we go into specialization like science or arts or whatever music yeah. but i am not saying that if you want to be a vocalist classical vocalist you also have to do master's degree in uh, economics it is not always needed but in my case, if I say only my case, it, I think I can speak generally about many of uh, my friends in our generation or in India, education is kind of a compulsory thing in our families, right? Like, I don't think there is anyone uh, who will disagree with this. Like, if you are born into a, a proper Indian family, middle class or whatever, uh, education is always there. It's like a part of your life, no matter what you are doing later in your life. So that is there. And being a Bengali, I was surrounded by like uh, geniuses in my family, actually. my One of my aunts, he's, she's no more now. She was one of the most talked about scientists. And she used to go to US to give lectures on uh, physical chemistry in John Hopkins University, in New York University. Uh, so she was that kind of uh, scientist and of course my father uncles and other aunts academics was always there on my mom's side my mother was uh, a, a master's degree holder in botany and zoology she had a full time job in botanical survey of india and at the same time she also was an amateur bharatanatyam dancer so 
we never saw or we never met anyone in our family or in in our relatives who was just uh, doing something else and no education uh, we never met anyone and education was always there as the first priority and music or sports was there as a hobby or serious hobby or serious passion and when we when i started learning tabla i never thought that i will become a tabla player later on professionally and that will become my livelihood i just looked at it as a subject that i am enjoying and i will give it my full energy like i am giving my full energy for physics chemistry maths or english or biology i am scoring 90% in maths so i will also score 90% in or above in tabla so that was my view point that as a subject i have to learn it properly and i have to complete my guruji's homework so that he cannot or he is not disappointed with me i have to do that so it happened like that so parallelly it was going and then later on whatever happened it happened and now uh, my life has changed and it has become the life of a musician but i think uh, those who want to uh, do fine art um, as a career academics or education basic education helps in in building up the personality how you speak or how you meet and greet somebody or when you are traveling in another city or another country how you are behaving or uh, lot of things or when you are on stage if you are asked to say something or if you are giving a lecture demonstration for example right now when i am talking to you so many people are listening to us and they are live with me so if i didn't know how to talk then uh, it this ability to talk or ability to connect to people is not coming from dhatete dhatete dada or dhatere kete dhatere kete dhatere that is a totally different thing so this comes from education from formal education from academics or that comes from the academic teachers those who are teaching you in school and how to what are the manners and how to present yourself so i think a basic education is required but when you go into specialization when you are uh, going into some field of your choice and you want to make it your full time thing then you can keep the academics uh, behind you maybe when after you have completed bachelor's or master's degree if you want to go into phd in maths or in physics that will be a hindrance to your life as a musician because uh, uh, i once tried like after completing master's degree i started uh, doing Uh, MCA Masters in Computer Application in Jadavpur University, and after completing one and a half years, it was three years course, one and a half years. One of my professors there, he somehow saw me playing tablas in some program in local program there uh, in Kolkata, and then next day when I went to class, he said that uh, you play tabla, right? I said, yeah, I play tabla. I want to play tabla as much as possible. So he said, then why are you here? Why are you doing MCA? said so, no i am doing mca because my parents also want and if i get mca maybe i can also uh, uh, get a job or make my life get more meaningful and blah 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 so he said see you are playing tabla and whatever i heard it is pretty decent so if you concentrate more on tabla you will do well in tabla i already saw the symptoms but if you do mca and you complete your degree immediately tcs will pick you up and they will send you to chennai and that will be the end of your tabla okay so you decide what you want to do because there can be uh, like millions of mcas coming out every year but there won't be so many tabla players coming out so because you have the ability and uh, talent and uh, sincerity you can give it a thought talk to your parents so my dad also told me yes if you want to give it a shot then if you are not successful later on you have your education to fall back on but yeah you can do it so i left mca without completing it after one and a half years i left mca and then started pursuing uh, tabla so after a certain time two things to do two things in a high level is very difficult if you can do it definitely it's great there are many examples like in south india there are tons of examples like all great musicians are so like highly educated and scholars and there are so many examples of that so hum, uh, human being humanly it is possible but uh, out here in uh, bengal the culture is little different so after a while we choose our own ways but the education helps you later on when you are in a certain field the education will definitely help you so i am not saying that 
if you are a classical vocalist, you have to be a PhD in physics. I'm not saying that, but at least complete your basic education up to the bachelor level, and then that will shape your personality uh, in a good way. That will help you uh, in, in your profession. And talking about profession, there's another uh, subtopic that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the term professional doesn't define quality. Okay. A professional tabla player or a professional musician means somebody who is earning money through that art, through tabla or sitar or vocal or whatever. But it doesn't mean that she has achieved or attained or he has achieved that level. There can be somebody else who is not a professional musician but performing even better. But sometimes we overlook these people because since they are not into this as the main uh, work they are doing something else sometimes we try to ne or we tend to neglect them we think that they are into some other profession so they are not professional musicians but the term profession means you are earning money through your tabla i can uh, play very bad tabla and yet get paid so i am a professional tabla player but i can be a very good tabla player and not get noticed all my life so I'm not a professional tabla player, but I'm a very good musician. So uh, there is a conflict between professional and good quality, which will always be there. Like Swapanji's guru, nobody even heard him play tabla. We came to know about him after Swapanji made it big. Before that, nobody knew him. We saw him live when he was past his 90s. Swapanji did a big felicitation for him. That is the first time in Kolkata we saw him when he was more than 90 years old. Before that, nobody heard him playing tabla. But he was such a knowledgeable person in tabla that he could produce somebody like Swapanji. So he is not a professional. He was not a professional tabla player. He didn't earn money by playing tabla. But he was a pandit in tabla. But he was doing something else as his uh, main job. So this term professional also has uh, kind of a relative meaning. I always say that to my students that professional tabla player doesn't mean that uh, always doesn't mean that you are playing great tabla anyways that will bring in more controversies also so <laughs> next question <laughs> uh, before going to the next question again there are a few comments uh, yeah. there is uh, mr sunil joshi uncle thank you for joining in so oh hello joshi ji namaste tejavrus dad i probably know Rithik has a question. He is again a tabla player from our generation. I'm sure you're okay. So not Rithik Roshan. Yeah. Okay. Not not Roshan. <laughs> not Roshan. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he is asking basically for uh, Riyaz advice. How to go about Riyaz? Yeah, Rithik. I know him personally. He's from Kolkata. I have met him few times. Uh, uh, well, Riyaz advice is. Uh, I don't know how to give Riyaz advice. I don't do Riyaz properly myself. Uh, so it's difficult to give advice to other people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, when we grow up learning classical music or listening or listening to stories about other Pandits and Ustads, there are certain things we hear that uh, they used to get up before the sunset and do three hours before sunset and after three hours and after sunrise, uh, six hours and all these stories are there. But uh, I think to do Riyas, uh, mental uh, condition, uh, proper mental condition is very necessary. You cannot do reyaz if you are physically or mentally stressed out or if you have some other worries in your head or if you are not in a proper reyaz ambience. Okay. First of all, you have to be alone with your instrument for reyaz. Okay. Facebook live during reyaz is the most, is the worst thing that you can do. Because Riyaz is like romancing with your instrument. It is, if I say in a different way, it is like uh, making love with your partner, basically. That is Riyaz. You are most in your intimate situation with your Riyaz. So how can you uh, give a Facebook live of Riyaz? So it is like <laughs> you are in the bedroom with your girlfriend and you are doing a Facebook live of that. So whenever I see a Facebook live of Riyaz or a little riyaz of Rag Bhairavi, a little riyaz of Tintal, little riyaz of Jhala. So I totally laugh actually because 
Riyaz is the most private moment with your instrument where you are trying to improve yourself or think or break something and create something new and you don't make that public because Riyaz is totally your thing or it's your secret weapon that you are trying to prepare. You don't uh, just display, oh, I have this weapon, that weapon and when I hit you, I will first hit you with the stick and then with the knife. So Riyaz should be totally secretly done and intimately done alone with the instrument and proper mental condition and with mental peace and not thinking of how many concerts I will get if I do the Riyaz or uh, exactly. next week, next week, how many artists I should at, uh, go and meet so that they keep me in their list, then they will call me in the concert. No, Riyaz is like just for yourself that you are doing this subject and you want to excel. You have to think about the greats. Allah Khan Sahib, Karamatullah Khan Sahib, Santa Prasad Ji, Kishan Maharaj Ji, later Zakir Ji, Sapanda, uh, Kumadda, Anindo Ji, these people, and later on whoever thinks of whom as icons. You, know? you have to think of them and try to reach at least near them. You know, Riyaz should be like that. But you have to set a goal and do the Riyaz. And it's like uh, trying to reach God or your God, or your Guru, or whoever you are idolizing. Raya should be like that. It's like meditation. Like you said, Dada Tete Dada Tunna should be like a chant. Dada Tete Dada Tunna. Dada Tete for hours. And there, and during that time, I, I have heard a story from Guruji. Some Ustadji's son passed away. He was doing the Riyaz. And somebody came and told him, Ustadji, your son is gone. So he said, Jisko jana tha, wo to chale gaye. Mera Riyaz khatam karke main aata so this kind of dedication is needed. Actually, a similar story about Ustad Imdad Khan Sahib, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, he maybe that is the story my Guruji told me. Riyaz, his daughter passed away. He yeah. was informed. He was crying, but his hands were not stopping. Exactly. So Riyaz should be done like that. I mean, totally shut off from the rest of the world. And uh, Ajay Kaku once told me, Ajay uncle, that when you do Riyaz, you uh, give your phone to somebody else. And you don't ask where you have, they have kept your phone. Just turn it off and give it to somebody else. Everything should be shut off. You should be totally with yourself. Everything should be shut off. Everything else should be shut off. You, you should not know anything else other than the Riyaz. And this is the philosophical aspect. And technical aspect, talking about tabla, Riyaz can be done in two ways. Or maybe three ways. One is for finger exercise. Number two is Targeting certain goals that you want to ex the expertise or that you want to improve on. And number three is practice for accompaniment. So number one, where you exercise only your fingers can be done by choosing simple goals, very simple goals. Dada tete dada tunna or dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, or dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, simple relas, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati dagena, dhati just pure nadin dinna, dadin dinna, dadin dinna, nadin dinna, nadin dinna, pure dhatu nara, dhatu nara. These are all the basic movements of the hand, of the fingers that we often use in tabla. So that is like workout, like we do uh, when you go to a gym, you are doing the uh, treadmill, okay, or you are just extending your mu muscles, uh, doing the stretches like that. So that's like the basic workout of the fingers. Next is uh, when you are trying to target a certain goal. Like maybe you can do a thematic riyaj. Like today I decide or you can make a chart. Seven days. First day is for tete. Second day is for dhere dhere. Third day tete and dhere dhere little heavy. Third day for dhene ghene. Fourth day for uh, again tere kete. So you can make a chart like that. Okay. And when there are certain phrases linked. Like if you are practicing tete. You can practice tere kete because tete and tere kete are linked. Tete goes into tere kete, like tete kete. Okay, so tete and tere kete are linked. And then if you are practicing dhene ghene, you can practice it. You can also practice dhene dhina ghena. Because dhene ghene and dhene dhina ghena both are floating movements of the hand. So you can link them together. Then when you are playing dhere dhere, dhere dhere reyas and tere kete reyas can be done together. Because da tere kete tak, dhere dhere kete, kete tak, these phrases are linked together. So that is like targeting some bowls and you can make a chart. Number three, accompaniment. If you are, uh, if you want to accompany with a vocalist, 
uh, and try to practice uh, accompaniment of a, with a vocalist you can uh, just turn the uh, metronome on and play vilambit ek tal just by yourself not with the vocalist just by yourself then two three four trek a din so play the ek tal with fillers and with uh, music and with melody and try to bring in the fillers as much as possible and try to visualize that you are playing with the vocalist and also the teen tal theka like the vocalist will uh, want you to play in that way or if you want to practice for an instrumentalist practice the nadin din na theka for the jhala you know uh, 100 bpm or 120 bpm whatever you want to do do that and then for accompaniment another best way to practice is go and sit with somebody uh, and practice your accompaniment where you can apply whatever you are thinking so that is another riyaz when you are going and practicing with an accompaniment and after the accompaniment don't request him that please take me in your next concert then that riyaz is useless okay then you are going to riyaz with a motive then it is not riyaz you have to go to your friend's house and do riyaz and clear up clear up the doubts whichever doubts you have and challenge each other musically or mathematically and do the riyaz for 4 hours and come back home and think whatever you have done record it come back home and think about it if you have done any mistake or how you can improve it you know then that is riyaz otherwise uh, uh, if you are going to some musician's house with a motive that if i go to him for 5 months he will take me at least in one concert then that is not riyaz then you are not learning anything and after 5 months he will get frustrated if he doesn't call you for a concert then he will go to another musician with the same motive exactly so these exactly. things are happening now a lot but that is not riyaz so basically these are the types of riyaz one can do for tabla thematic or just working exercise for fingers or accompaniment riyaz but riyaz is the most intimate time you have with your instrument so it should be the connection between you and instrument no other things no facebook live no whatsapp no status update nothing uh Okay, I guess we shall move on to the next question. So, as That's we true. mentioned in Very the introductory true. remarks, uh, Avartan School of Rhythm, your brainchild, you have been mentoring yeah. and grooming several students there. I mean, talking about Riaz, you have already covered a lot of things, but specifically, uh, yes. how has the Guru Shishya equation changed over the years compared to when yeah. you were learning? That is <laughs> that is a huge topic. I mean, if I start talking, maybe I will lose my students also. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah guru shishya equation has changed a lot and uh, sometimes it is no more guru to guru shishya it is now just teacher and student has become english no more indian uh, we cannot say guru shishya now we have to say teacher and student relation in most cases because uh, guru shishya what i saw or what my guru ji saw that is more ancient even what i saw when i went to my guruji in 1984 i started the first concert i was allowed to attend was in 1987 after 3 years of learning with guruji and whose concert abba ji with zakir ji and thankfully we didn't have youtube that time uh, so guruji didn't allow us who were young that those days because we had senior guru bhai they were going to other concerts but guru ji told me that if i don't allow you don't listen to your guru bhai also forget about other tabla players don't listen to anyone just do my homework and come back and play for me and i used to follow him like that not only me others all my guru bhai also they used to follow him like that that he is the leader he is walking in front we are following and we are not looking at other people who are walking beside or maybe he walking in a different way we are not trying to follow that different way also so the first concert he told me on his own that today you can go and listen to abba ji because he is my ustad so i am giving you permission to go and listen to him that was after 3 years and that is uh, guru shishya parampara in one example previously uh, the guru shishya parampara was not different like it was very difficult to get stuff from the guru that unless you satisfy your guru through your playing unless the guru thinks that okay you have uh, played or you have uh, executed that qaida or that rela to his expectation or at least near his expectation 
then only he will move on to the next one. That was Guru Shishya Parampara, and Guru has to be treated like father. He has the extreme, uh, I will say, extreme authority over you musically. Surrendering, total surrendering has to be there. That thing has changed. I mean, I, uh, I can say without any hesitation that, that that kind of attitude has changed. There are a lot of factors. Uh, one of the factors uh, is definitely impatience from the student. And both of you are young students. So I'm not saying that there is no talent among the young, young musicians. There is immense talent, even better than us. Because uh, when I see some productions from the, your generation, I am totally awestruck, like how they can do this or how they are thinking, uh, maintaining the traditional structure, how they are doing it, crossover music, fantastic. But sometimes I also feel that in some cases, in, uh, with some young uh, students or young performers, the patience is little lacking. Uh, maybe one reason is because so much is available nowadays. Like my Guruji told me, don't go and listen to anyone. I followed him. But now YouTube is available. If I tell my student, don't go and listen to him, he will say, I didn't go anywhere. I was at home, <laughs> but I listened to YouTube. <laughs> so uh, that is a big uh, distraction sometimes because uh, like in education, in education, in school, we have grades, first grade, second grade, third grade, class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, up to 12th grade. So suppose somebody is in grade two and you are giving him a physics uh, problem from grade 10. He will not understand anything. It will be totally like Greek for him, unless he is Greek. Uh, it will be totally like, uh, it will go over his head, like miles over his head. So, will be there though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that is uh, one thing that is hampering the Guru Shishya Parampara nowadays. That uh, students are sometimes not waiting for the Guru to give them the advice or give them the permission. Uh, that has changed, and we have to deal with it sometimes strictly. Sometimes we are like, okay, chodo, usko kuch nahi hona, uska chodo do, jo hoga dekha jayega. Uh, I mean. We also do that sometimes, but that is what I'm saying. If somebody who is learning tabla for three years and he is watching Jogesh Ji playing a very complicated Laikari and uh, he is influenced by that, or if he is watching uh, Anindo Chatterjee playing something, Pandit Anindo Chatterjee playing something at uh, super fast tempo, or Zaki Ji playing a Tisra Jati uh, Papeshkar and he is looking at it or hearing it at his home, not understanding anything. Then if he's trying to copy it, then he's totally his public life will be destroyed. So that is the Guru Shishya Parampara, like the danger, <laughs> danger in Guru Shishya Parampara. Like if you try to explain to him that don't listen to that or don't look at that video now, look at that video after three years. So that student might get insulted. I have faced that many times. In, the, in that way, Guru Shishya Parampara has changed. And... Uh, like Riyaz wise also, like the concept of Riyaz, how much you have to practice one Kaida, that sometimes the realization is not there. Like when I hear stories from uh, Guruji and from other seniors like Pandit Kumar Bose, I am a big fan of him also, Anindoji. Uh, so when they tell us or when they have told me stories of their Riyaz, what we are seeing on stage, that is like a finished product. Well, what is behind that? The Riyaz, what they have done. I mean, I have done nothing. Or our generation, I don't know how many people have done that much of Riyaz. Like uh, Kumar, the Kumar uncle told me that he used to go into his Riyaz room at 12 p.m. and come out at 9 p.m. at night. And in, in between, no one was allowed to enter that room. Anindoji, he told me about his Riyaz that uh, from after dinner, uh, from 12 at night up to 6 in the morning. My dad told me a story of Kenamatullah Khan Sahib's Riyaz. Every night, in those days there was no uh, like digital clock or something. Masjid Khan Sahib used to tell him every night after dinner, three candle Riyaz, Mombatti Ka Riyaz. 
three candles each candle burning for two hours uh, sorry each candle uh, burning for one hour so one candle going down next candle he used to come and light light up so three candle teen mombatti ka reyaz every night uh, that is that was the reyaz at night after dinner before that during the day lot of reyaz was happening so this kind of reyaz they have done that's why their level is superlative so the guru shishya parampara is based on confidence on or belief in the guru and the guru also needs to have that kind of surrendering from the shishya that then the guru shishya relation and the guru shishya parampara can continue now it is more like teacher student and moreover now when we teach in the western countries and when we do skype lessons and when we teach online online is just an uh, just a option of teaching online cannot be the proper way of teaching but those who cannot reach us physically they are uh, getting to learn online that is a good thing but unless uh, like we call it gurumukhi vidya our music is a gurumukhi vidya unless you are sitting in front of the guru and uh, playing along or singing along uh, with the guru it cannot happen so that is the main uh, platform or basis of guru shishya parampara the belief in the guru that because the guru has already crossed that path he knows how to walk or how to run in that path he knows where the ditches are and where uh, you have to walk fast or what to avoid and what not to do so if you can put blind faith into your guru then it will definitely uh, be for your it will be you it will be beneficial to you there is no doubt about it because the guru is more experienced we have to have that belief and total surrendering guru also expects that total surrendering from the shishya then only the guru shishya parampara will be good otherwise teacher student relationship is always there it is there like teacher student you come okay write down the kaida do it and next week uh, teacher student says guru ji uh, i have done it i have played it now let's do the next kaida so you have played it but how you have played it that realization is among very few very few like i can say 0.5% or maybe 1% so that very few are doing good as young artists but there are so many learning indian classical music but those who have that realization about where this can go like where dhada tete dhada tunna can go dhada tete dhada tunna is not uh, the first kaida it is the first year kaida uh, i don't want to play that anymore no dhada tete dhada tunna is not only a first year kaida what can happen with dhada tunna the once the realization will come then only you will have that surrendering to your guru and once you surrender to to your guru the guru will also realize that the student has surrendered then the guru will also take proper care of the student otherwise the guru shishya bondage will not happen so, but things are changing a like, lot of people are learning from other professions they are coming and learning music so for them music is not the bread earner so they don't have so much time also so i will say guru shishya parampara happens with very few students not with everyone yeah, but it should carry on like uh, the teaching and learning of indian classical music should carry on because it's the backbone of our music the most traditional uh, music so it should be there and the guru shishya teacher student or whatever you say it should be there uh at this point uh, we'll just quickly look at one of your videos i mean short clip with your students this is again from shubho jyoti das official channel anyone who wants to watch is more than encouraged to go and watch it so here it is
Yeah, so uh, they were Abhi Mukherjee and Pranav Chatterjee, my senior students. They are doing pretty well now. They are also playing uh, concerts in Kolkata and uh, really sincere students indeed. learning for me for the last seven eight years yeah, already. Then I also have some more coming up. <laughs> this was just a small project we did during the pandemic. It was um, absolutely beautiful. I mean, I have of course watched the full thing, and because of time constraints, <laughs> I could see like yeah, the full thing. thing. If you watch, then it will be a different thing. Uh, initially, mm-hmm. too, we started. I started in a different way, right. and ended in Kabla. So please watch it. It is always fun. We did it. A great joke. <laughs> Yeah, it's That's overall a fun video. video. Yeah. So this is another good example of how uh, sometimes we have to change the way we present. The way I presented this video, it ended with a classical rela, but the entire presentation, the way it started, I got comments from many people who are totally uh, like not uh, into the classical world or they don't listen to classical music at all. I got video, I got uh, comments from them later all that it was so well done. And that he immediately got our attention, and uh, finally we saw the whole video that ended with a very classical tabla, and we really enjoyed it. So in a way, I was successful in introducing many people into classical tabla through this video. And later on, I started sending them other links of uh, classical music and my tabla and all. Anyways, there you go, Rush. Bhai, maybe the next question. Yeah. So we have already crossed uh, close to two uh, yes, hours. Yes, I'll proceed on to the next question. Uh, yeah, hopefully people are yes. still there watching. <laughs> yes, there That's are, why. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, right now I can see twenty-three people online. Yes. So, oh. yeah, it's not bad. Oh, not Great. bad at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shoot. Next question. Okay. I am very. I am enjoying a lot. Uh, personally speaking, I am really enjoying. All the questions are really uh, well thought, and uh, I like facing questions from younger generation. I personally, I love meeting younger generation musicians who are really working hard for this art, and uh, you two are really uh, coming up well and all already well known uh, among the young maestros. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with young musicians like you and others who are doing so good. So thank you once again for. Making me a part of this. Our pleasure having you here, Dada. Our pleasure having you here. Uh, Tejo Bhush Bhai, are you there? Uh, I'm not sure if he has. He might have lost. Yeah, he's there. He's, he's here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, am I audible and visible? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You are. Oh, sorry. Perfectly. But cutting in the in the middle. So sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Great, great. So we will proceed to the next question. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as a uh, performing musician myself uh, i have often wondered about this i think for me it was very instinctive the the answer of this question was very instinctive yeah. the 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 question is uh, you've accompanied several modern day legends on stage uh, for both vocal and instrumental domain yeah. So, uh, how does your approach to Sangat differ in both the ways? Hmm. Uh, the, no, it's a very, uh, am I cutting very off? relevant question. Very relevant question. I think, uh, right. <clears throat> I think among uh, right. all the classical musicians or all the classical performers, I think a tabla player who is uh, accompanying other musicians or other drummers, genres, a tabla player is the one who has to adapt the most or he has to change his thought process the most because <clears throat> a tabla player plays with a sitarist a sarod player a vocalist a kathak dancer a tumri singer <clears throat> bhajan singer or film music or uh, other genres whereas a uh, sitarist uh, is playing mainly sitar as a solo instrument he is not Uh, doing so many, or maybe not at all, any concert with a flamenco dancer, just for example, I'm saying. But a tabla player is somebody who is accompanying so many genres, and the person is the same, and the instrument is also the same, tabla. But he is like one to many relationship. If you know set theory, it's like one to many relation, 
so that's why i think it is a very difficult task for a tabla player because every moment he has to adapt and as a tabla player i will say that when you learn tabla parallelly you should have at least some knowledge of vocal music ragas uh, that will help you in the accompaniment or mood of a raga you should know what is the mood of raga darbari and what is the mood of rag todi and what is the mood of rag maru bihag or what is the uh, mood of pilu or what is mal mood of malkosh or what is the mood of uh, miyaki malhar similarly <coughs> tal what is the mood of dhamar and what is the mood of rupak and what is the mood of vilambit ektal everything is different dhamar doesn't only mean kadite dite dha gadine dhineta no or rupak is not only tin tin na dhinna dhinna that is just the uh, grammar it's like language so uh, when we are angry we shout when we are romantic we don't shout or when we are uh, consoling somebody our voice change similarly when we are accompanying music first we have to listen and then we try to blend into the mood or genre so that is the uh, thing that a tabla player has to do and i also try the same thing but it requires some experience and maturity also over the years so first of all after you have learnt a lot of kaida relas and uh, material tabla material then you have to listen you have to a tabla player has to listen to good accompaniment if you want to be a good vocal accompanist you have to listen to very good vocal accompaniment like kermatullah khan sahab was one of the icons of vocal accompaniment so you have to listen to people like them later on like i told you uh, anand gopal da anand gopal uncle uh, pandit samar saha uh, uh, my guruji uh, my guruji played with uh, vocal legends like all the legends ustad amit khan sahab and ustad parul nawal khan to regular accompanies to them later on pandit chinmay lahiri uh, and these people uh, uh, tarapoto pandit tarapoto chakraborty so just name them all the who's who of vocal music Uh, begum parvin sultana ji later so i have learned a lot of vocal accompaniment from my guruji from his playing from his stories about kamutullah khan sahab from my father also from his stories about kamutullah khan sahab later on by listening to uh, our maestros in kolkata pandit kumar bose ji the fantastic accompaniment of vocal music and uh, so you have to listen to very good vocal accompaniment tabla also for instrumental you have to listen to very good Uh, accompaniment of instrumental music because vocal accompaniment and instrumental accompaniment are totally like different sometimes poles apart a vocal accompaniment accompaniment in general requires lot of patience and restraint because you are not there to show off your stuff you are there to support uh, the music and make it better and so that the, the person you are playing with will feel comfortable with you if he is disturbed if your presence makes he more her disturbed then uh, you should also know that if you if somebody is disturbing you what he will do you will ask him to please don't disturb me please go so if you are creating a disturbance for your artist he will also feel the same way he will think that of oh, how when will this guy leave it will be like that so you should, you have to give him that feeling that i am so comfortable with my tabla player so the main uh, job of the tabla player is to make the artist comfortable that he will want to perform with you more and more so you have to feel the mood or feel his uh, way of thinking about the music or what he is expecting from the tabla player and every artist is different so if you play tintal with mr x in a way and you did really well so next day with mr y that tintal that tintal might totally not work the way you have played the day before so that day you have to change into that mood so as a tabla player you have to first listen to good accompaniment and then try to not imitate but try to gather inspiration and uh, materials uh, to create your own form of accompaniment that will be melodious that will be uh, supportive musically very compatible with the artist but it takes time uh, it takes time to actually uh, go into that we are all i mean i personally i am still working for it and every concert is like a lesson and come back home and re- think about it and uh, 
try to make the next one better. It's all a learning experience. But the main thing is, first we have to learn to listen to the artist. I remember there is one story, uh, one interview, Zakir Ji said that uh, when I started playing with Ravi Shankar Ji, I am I'm saying in direct speech, that uh, when I started playing with Ravi Shankar Ji, I used to sit facing the audience. And uh, then after one concert, Ravi Shankar Ji told me, ha, Zakir, uh, what rag, what tal, uh, what did I do? Do you remember anything that I played? Any phrase or any likari I did? You played very well. You played your parts totally perfectly. But do you remember anything? Or uh, do you remember how many times I looked at you? Zakir Ji said, no, he had, he had no. He said, I had no answer. Because I was not looking at him at all. I was looking at the audience. So from next time, I started sitting like 90 degrees, like looking towards him. And then the connection was super. So that's when maybe he thought that now it is time to listen and then play. So first of all, the main thing you have to do is to listen, to be a good accompanist. Yeah. And never, never try to uh, go beyond. I mean, overpowering happens in wrestling, not in music. Or overtaking happens in uh, car uh, racing or in uh, 100 meter dash, but it doesn't. It is. Uh, uh, it does. It cannot happen in music. Like you are overpowering somebody, or you are trying to totally dominate somebody on stage. Uh, that is not for music. That is for wrestling, for car racing, for uh, cricket. You can hit sixes of a bowler. But uh, we should not try to hit a six on stage when you are accompanying some musician. So it is a totally different thing. Music is all about the heart. Uh, very little physical things are involved. Yeah, of course, you have to play. But the feeling is more important uh, when it comes to accompaniment. Sometimes I have seen many maestros just playing theka. But it is sounding so nice. I mean... No terekete, no rela, no dere dere, nothing. Maybe we are getting disappointed also that, oh, he is not playing anything, just theka. But later on, uh, when we are listening to the recording, the theka itself is speaking uh, for the standard of tabla. So that is a realization that only theka can also be a uh, like benchmark for a tabla player. Ah, what a theka. We always say that. We often say that. Yeah, theka bajaya. Ah, ah. The immediate moment he starts the theka, ah, 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 the balance of the hand and the dha and the dhin, you know, you don't need to play too much. So these things, uh, I think, are required from an accompanist. And we have to keep that in mind as a tabla accompanist. That is like if you, are, if you are in a boat and if the singer or the sitarist is the passenger in the boat, I am the maji, I am the boatman, actually. So if I do something wrong, both of us will fall or drown in the water. It's not that he will drown and I will escape. No. Both of us will drown. Or we will both fall in the water together. So it's like sailing in the same boat. So, and it's the connection and the working together uh, that will keep the boat sailing in a smooth way across the waters. At this point, uh, uh, we'll just look at collection of videos that we put together of Dada's accompanying several legends on stage. So here it is. Yeah.
क्या बात है क्या बात है एक्सेलेंट नथिंग टू से नाइस कोला क्या बात नाइस वाह नाइस कलेक्टर ब्यूटीफुल ऑल योर प्लेइंग सो वेल या ऑल दिस एक्चुअली ऑल दिस आर्टिस्ट्स एंड इवन मोर आई हैव हेल्प्ड देम टू शेप माय प्लेइंग और अकंपनीमेंट अ लॉट ऑल ऑफ देम आई ओ इट टू ऑल ऑफ देम सॉरी वेरी सॉरी वेरी सॉरी I intended to remove it from the stream, and it got added. Very sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was saying I, I owe it to all of them. All of them are 
fascinating That's fantastic right. artists in their own rights and it was my real fortune to be able to accompany them and uh, that they chose me to be their accompany this is a real fortune and a learning experience every time yeah. indeed let's so it's time yeah. for the yes. final i should say set of questions okay but uh, so basically what happens is when we learn music as students and then when we kind of formally or informally enter the industry mm. we kind of get to see two very different pictures mm. uh how do i put it i mean let us say i mean there is no harm in saying that there is a disbalance of opportunity that prevails in the industry owing mm. to several factors not just one uh then maybe uh, there is this uh, there are semi professional musicians that we could say people who are earning through music but also through other oh. sources of income exactly uh, there are uh, we get to see because certain individuals earn from other sources they charge maybe slightly less for their work and then people who earn solely through music are expected to uh, also exactly also they work for that amount uh, exactly. there are uh, yeah, unfortunately a, a lot of problems that uh, some someone who is a fresh professional has to yeah. see and these problems have nothing to do with music no. so uh, how do you grow as a musician in such an ecosystem yeah. actually uh, this uh, just to continue what you said at the end like someone doing something else for a living and then also playing music as a semi professional that has happened before also like uh, uh, professor or pandit hiru gangopadhyay who was a, a legend of bengal tabla player yeah, he was a lawyer uh, he was a uh, lawyer practicing law and he never uh, charged any money for his playing <laughs> it was his passion and a very strong passion so he used to play tabla and but his main source of income from uh, was from his law professional as a lawyer then number 2 uh, later on we saw uh, buddhadev jethu uh, yeah, i had the fortune of playing with him many times also pandit buddhadev dasgupta he was an engineer and he had a big uh, engineering firm and he was uh, a busy engineer at the same time he was such a knowledgeable musician fantastic performer and guru to many who are performing nowadays fantastic balance between the two uh, so this can happen actually Uh, if somebody learns music well and if he has the ability and capability and the sincerity definitely he can excel in music and it might not be his bread earning profession maybe he can be a doctor or engineer or something else but yet play uh, music in a high standard that is totally acceptable i mean definitely i mean you cannot stop somebody saying that uh, you are doing some other work go and just do it don't come and play music here definitely you cannot say that because that is harmful for music uh, mm-hmm. but uh, i will say what you said is yeah it's true that when somebody uh, there are many in our generation also who are uh, earning money from other work uh, from other professions but at the same time fantastic musicians so when they are invited uh, to play when they are invited to play sometimes uh, they are playing for very nominal fee and sometimes also free of cost because their livelihood doesn't depend on music because they don't have to think about uh, money from that concert uh, to do the grocery next day because they are earning a lot of money from other profession but this is actually detrimental not for music but it is detrimental for the others who are just doing music as a profession so sometimes they are also requested to match them which is uh, sometimes very uh, insulting or very uh, difficult to do somebody if somebody has gone and played a concert uh, for free or very nominal fees and then another tabla player or another musician is expected to do the same who is only doing music nothing else as a profession then it will be very difficult for him so i think i think if i was doing some other work and earning money and playing tabla as the second profession i would have charged three times more than what i charge because if i am charging less then i am actually killing the market for another tabla player who is just surviving tabla by tabla 
if i charge less then i am doing the damage to him i have no damage because i am getting money from my other profession so i think those who are working somewhere and doing the uh, classical music as a second uh, thing they should charge even more so that uh, the organizers will not be able to give an example that oh he played for so many so less and why are you charging more i think these I people have more responsibility i am in bringing up the in bringing up the standards these people have more responsibility they are fantastic artists no doubt about it but they also have a responsibility that uh, through their gesture they can support other musicians who are just thriving uh, through music and also young people like suppose uh, a senior or semi senior musician who is doing other jobs he can play for free maybe it won't matter to him but if another young artist if he is trying for the same concert he will get the comment that oh he came and played for free and you are half his age and you are asking for 5000 rupees so that will be bad for him so i think these these musicians they should take up uh, this uh, as a responsibility to bring up the financial situation they have to say that no i don't want to pay, play for free if you are uh, thinking of 10000 for me i uh, you pay me 20000 then i will play otherwise i will not play so if they can do that if they have the guts because uh, guts is lacking a lot nowadays everyone is looking for opportunities no matter how so that is the main damage unless we have some principle ethics and mainly guts you cannot do a noble job or you cannot change the society so as exactly. a musician you have to have that guts or responsibility exactly to change the society like uh, i try to do that in our seniors i have seen become the do that a lot i mean he has changed many things also zakir ji did that uh, during his times like and uh, if you see old recordings sometimes you are hearing wonderful tabla or sarangi but you don't know the name of the artist who is playing there i think pandit ravi shankar ji was the first person who gave the name of the tanpura player also in the lp recording but even now sometimes we see that the name of the accompanist you have to use a microscope to see the name of the accompanist on the flyer which is not uh, very much desirable because uh, unless you have that accompanist you cannot perform uh, so these things have to change it's all about the mentality Uh, that the poster is coming out with only the artists uh, main artists so called main artists there is no name or picture of tabla player or harmonium player as if it will be totally an alap based concert so these things have to change uh, so this is one situation that uh, even we are facing young musicians are also facing uh, the thing and also the two profession thing you are earning money from some source and then you don't care how much you get paid and you are just going and paying the concert you are undercutting the market and spoiling the uh, situation for other musicians or younger artists uh, this has this has to change but i cannot force somebody to do that that person has to think about it uh, but it's really bad i mean it should change or the, you cannot also do a rule or make a rule like the doctors had a rule one time that if you are doing private practice you cannot work uh, in a hospital or if you are working in a hospital you cannot do private practice those kind of rules cannot apply to music that if you are working somewhere you cannot play perform in public you can just teach you cannot say that I mean, this <laughs> this cannot apply on music but those who are doing it they should be more responsible then the other topic of somebody getting more focus than others like uh, those who are referred to as star kids or whatever privileged in bollywood that is also happening in music also that is happening i mean that is uh, very normal you know like uh, for example tejavrush difference between tejavrush and another tabla player tejavrush belongs to a family where his mother father both are known in the music world so automatically somebody will ask his father how is your son playing is he playing tabla we want to hear him this is very natural i mean you cannot blame that person because if my son plays tabla my wife my wife is a kathak dancer if my wife uh, starts dancing kathak everybody will ask like is your son playing tabla or they will ask my wife is your son dancing kathak uh, i let him come and perform in my concert like if they are doing fairly well so this is very normal i mean uh, that person that young musician or his parents maybe they are not ready for that also 
they don't want also their child to go and perform there but the people will automatically ask this is very normal i mean this has been termed as nepotism but this is a very natural nepotism that will happen to everyone and uh, this is very obvious like like bikram da is uh, pandit shankar ghose's son zaki ji is abba ji's son uh, sabir khan sir is kamatullah khan sir's son you know like uh, so automatically when abba ji is playing with ravi shankar ji ravi shankar ji will ask uh, tumhara beta kaise baja raha hai ek din lao sunenge this is a very natural question you know because they are like friends so it's like we ask our friends how is your son doing or what is he studying it is like that so it is expected that ustad ji's beta will also play tabla pandit ji's uh, beta will also sing like ajay uncle's daughter koshiki a fantastic singer so it is very normal that koshiki has learned singing and taken up to that super level and when she was young ajay kaku faced this obvious question that uh, how is your daughter singing we want to hear him please bring him when you come uh, so she went to usa with uh, uh, with uh, ajay uncle when she was a teenager so this this is very, very obvious this is a very natural choice uh, one should not complain about it like that is a very uh, normal decision on a normal selection from the crowd indeed uh, but uh, i will say that there are many others who are equally talented equally deserving so there should be more forums and more uh, events where there is a balance between like presently uh, rashid khan sahab son is singing very well and he is uh, singing here and there some major concerts if you complain about that then you that is a like a, not a valid complaint because as i said like it is expected that rashid khan son will sing and then the organizer will ask him that can we have him as a young performer so if another young performer who is singing equally well if he complains then he has to realize that he is in a different situation so for him he has to make his or carve his path or make his presence felt by more hard work mainly through hard work and definitely if the quality is good uh, it will be recognized because uh, as in bengali we say agun kokhono chhai diye chapa jay na like you cannot uh, suppress fire by sawdust it is difficult even the, if the fire is gone the smoke will still stay so people will see the smoke at least and know that there was fire there so i think uh, yes there is a disbalance between that but that is very obvious and i don't think anyone is so cruel that they will deliberately suppress somebody uh, uh, that has to be a very cruel mentality to do that and uh, another thing that is very biological and very natural biologically like it happens in all uh, fields of life that for a parent if, even if his son is a rapist that is their favorite child for a parent for parents right like uh, they will not want to believe that my son is a uh, criminal that is a very natural thing so every father and mother will first want to see their child going up the ladder so this is a very natural phenomena natural feeling if you say nepotism that is a very natural nepotism or a very natural biased feeling you cannot uh, you cannot uh, destroy that like if somebody is if my son and another guy is walking on the street maybe if my son falls down i will react in a certain way and if the other guy falls down i will not react maybe in that way so it doesn't mean that i don't i am neglecting that other guy no it means that i am more connected to my son and i am not so connected to the other person so it happens in every every field of life so when it comes to music if my son or my daughter is performing on stage it's like a big uh, like a uh, moment of pride for me but at the same time when another student of mine is performing or another student of some other teacher is performing the teacher feels proud definitely if you ask the teacher he will definitely feel proud it is not that he will say that oh don't take him only take my son or daughter i don't think it is true in all cases but it happens naturally it happens naturally like i also face this now like many organizers are already asking me your son is now uh, 14 15 years old maybe so is he playing tabla is he ready to play a short tabla solo 
already asking. So if I say yes, he is ready, you can take him, then he will get a stage automatically. So for uh, sons and daughters or for kids of well-known artists, the, the path is little smoother or the approach or the uh, windows are more open than others. That is the only difference. The organizers are like known to them. They are like uncles and aunties, you know, because their father or mother, they are already performing them. So the uh, person who is arranging Doverland Festival uh, is like, uh, I play there. So for my son, that organizer is like an uncle. So the relationship is like that. So uh, that disbalance will always, always be there. I am not saying that somebody can be so cruel that he can destroy uh, somebody's uh, musical career and only uh, take his daughter or son ahead. It doesn't happen like that. And another thing is, there is also another uh, big problem for the star kids because they are always compared with their parents or with uh, their father or mother if they are great performers. So I think in a way they have more difficulty in proving themselves than others who are not sons and daughters of big famous artists. Because uh, uh, it is very easy for them to face these comments like, oh, wow, you are playing okay or singing okay, but your father, oh, what he used to sing, you cannot even imagine. Or your mother, you are not even half. So these things they face. So that is also a big challenge or big problem for them. But other uh, young artists or other young musicians, uh, maybe th somebody's father is an engineer and he is playing tabla or he is playing sitar, they will not have to face that question or face that uh, comment that, oh, we have heard your father, he was such a good sitar player, but you are okay, not bad, you still have to practice more. So these things they are not facing, but actually the sons and daughters of famous artists, they are facing already uh, like a uh, uh, lot of the young uh, generation uh, kids who are whose parents or whose father or mother are well-known musicians, they are facing these comments on public uh, platform. They are facing these comments. So it is not difficult. Life is not difficult. Uh, life is not uh, uh, very smooth for them, very difficult for them also. We have to think that way also that what they are facing. It is very easy to uh, criticize or it is very easy to just uh, accuse somebody that, oh, he is only uh, thinking about his child, not thinking of others. But they also have this problem, right? But as I told you, that biological thing that we all want our offspring to succeed the most, that is very biological, a very natural feeling. You cannot change it. I mean, uh, everybody has that. I mean, you, you cannot... Uh, I don't know. You cannot argue about it. Do I make sense or not? It makes complete sense. I mean, yes. everyone has yes. their share yes. of trucks, but Exactly. Everyone has. And also, exactly. uh, another thing that uh, once I heard Pandit Kumar Bose say this, uh, he's also uh, uh, born to a very illustrious musical family. But he said, and the stories about their struggle, I heard stories of Zakirji struggling in his younger days that... Uh, he used to go and uh, put posters of his concerts on coffee shops and all these things. So they also had their share of struggle. Pandit Shukma Sharma uh, told in his interview that I didn't know uh, when the check from the radio station will arrive because I didn't have any money to buy rice for next day. So these struggles have been there. Now we are seeing them staying at seven star hotels, but this is not the background. Uh, so these struggles are there for everyone. Even for star kids, so, uh, Kumada told me that uh, story of all these struggles. My Guruji uh, told me stories of his struggles. So struggle will always be there for everyone. But just the thing that if you are born lucky in a well-known family, then the access becomes smoother. But when you are on stage, you have to prove yourself. Otherwise, the audience will not uh, will not forgive you or will not just take you for granted. I mean, you have to prove yourself. You might get the stage easy, but you have to prove yourself. But yes. yeah, I th the, other, the other bunch who are not so lucky, they have to work yes. hard. I think more. a balance of everything is needed more in this approach. I think even from the guru itself or even from the organizers that you, you're talking about, uh, I think uh, in spotting talents, I think they should be more wary about uh, and they should be more knowledgeable about uh, a person with an artistic background, uh, definitely yeah. having that kind of a prowess over his instrument and um, 
also someone who is equally doing good and uh, exactly. you know but doesn't belong another thing that has uh, actually that is more missing nowadays i can talk only about right. kolkata because i have, i am in kolkata is very much lacking now in kolkata is the organizers who are organizing most of them just uh, are spending money and putting up a festival they have no idea of indian classical music they have not heard indian classical music properly they have no knowledge of uh, good quality uh, what is a good quality performance or who is deserving who is not deserving a uh, lot of factors are influencing them somebody coming in with a sponsorship or somebody getting a recommendation through, through something or through some other way or a uh, lot of uh, negative factors are playing you know like uh, sometimes uh, i joke that nowadays uh, you can get a concert not by practicing at home but depends on how many times you have visited the organizer at his home with a box of sweets so these things are happening you know so uh, i i don't know about other places in india but in kolkata there are many organizers who don't have so much sound knowledge about indian classical music but they are organizers because they have the power they have the money but when musicians good musicians are organizing festivals we can see really lot of good artists coming up like recently rajya sangeet sammel and the west bengal state academy festival was done many performers this time perform for the first time in that festival who have never performed before and it is happening a lot like uh, pandit samasa uh, tejinda uh, bikram da uh, uh, oya kaku even i try to uh, organize yearly uh, so when it is done by a musician then i think uh, the standard matters because if i am presenting somebody it is also my responsibility that i have to present good quality music otherwise people will complain or they will think there is something wrong kuch to garbad hai nahi to ye kaise ud gaya stage pe you know all these things uh, people are not uh, idiots they understand lot of things so when a musician is doing or arranging a concert i think they look for good talents but of course uh, there are some things are institutionalized in, like institution wise also lot of things happen like when uh, uh, like uh, itc sra is doing something they will definitely Uh, give priority to their scholars because it's a big institution and they also want their scholars to perform definitely they will present their deserving scholars but at the same time they are also presenting other musicians it is happening nowadays uh, similarly when uh, i am presenting my uh, avartan school of rhythm concert i am definitely presenting my students at least one or two of them good ones then i am also inviting other young uh, uh, musicians and other uh tabla players from outside who are really good and uh, also those some of them may be not so known uh, people don't know their names and i am searching and presenting so this is happening also it's uh, not always like uh, we should not think about the dark side so much a lot of good things are also happening so uh, i think it will happen more and more and nowadays the social media is so in a way it's helping also in a way uh, that lot of uh, young musicians or young uh, students can present their art and they are getting noticed and through that they are getting calls for concerts also it is happening i myself have got many calls from my videos like all these videos youtube videos and all lot of people have known me also they didn't know my name before and i have got uh, calls for concerts so this is also happening so uh, i think at the end of the day if the level is that high then you cannot be ignored i mean you will think twice before ignoring somebody who is really good uh i guess that brings us Wait. another the thing I, that came to my mind i don't know whether it's proper to say i think uh, uh, somebody said like uh, also a uh, lot of senior musicians have also discussed about it about retiring age of performers and this is a very valid topic because uh, our music depends on knowledge like how much knowledge you have and even if you grow old the knowledge matters because we all look up to knowledgeable musicians and how much we can learn from them but i think after a certain age the physical ability goes down that is like uh, the uh, kind of the law of nature it will go down like th- the way you are at 30 it will not be the same at 50 and definitely will not be the same at 70 so uh, i think sometimes we also have to think that 
okay this maybe this performer has already reached his peak and now going down so before he crashes he should go out of the uh, performing world with pride or with uh, with a good feeling so that nobody can say anything bad about that performer that realization has to come from within i mean uh, otherwise it will not happen you cannot just uh, say that oh you are 70 please stop performing no because in at 95 only the amiranjan manager is singing better than many at 35 so these are also these phenomena are also there so uh, somebody who is performing has to know that i think now i should stop because people have heard me at my best they should not hear me at my worst that realization should come from within like the players the sports person they also do the same thing i think uh, sometimes we as performers must if you if, if we think that way then we will be able to create more space from uh, for the freshers to come up i think that is very true i guess on that note in fact we are nearing midnight <laughs> and <laughs> one hour we decided to one and half hours now it is almost 3 hours almost 3 hours i know <laughs> but there are still people no, watching a, so yeah yeah no but such a knowledge thank uh, to everyone who has wow. been through all the three hours of this <laughs> session we ourselves have learned a lot we got to know so much so exactly thank you so much dada for agreeing to do this once thank you more. oh no, it was a pleasure i will definitely agree to this kind of things uh, as many times as you want me to i enjoy this kind of sessions <laughs> and it's also uh, my uh, kind of uh, i can also convey my feelings i am also getting an opportunity to do that it's not very often that we get to do uh, get an opportunity we get an opportunity to convey our feelings right so our musical feelings That's or thoughts so in a way i am also very lucky that i am able to uh, speak my heart out to all of you out there it's very so thank humbling. you for listening to me also <laughs> and uh, also i should say thank you tejavrush bhai for doing this exactly <laughs> i was i was <laughs> you are traveling to tomorrow right like, you are here now you are traveling tomorrow uh, tejavrush He's no, no, no. I'm. I've already traveled and reached. Oh, uh, quite luckily. Okay. Yeah, the concert tomorrow. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm in wow, a hotel the right now. So. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's great. No, that's really. I nice. had to. I had to make time for this conversation because uh, I knew it was going to be a splendid one, and it's such an exper- humbling experience to talk to someone who who wants to equally share things with us with uh, excitement. You know, with that it's level a of uh, kind of fun altogether. Exactly. beautiful thank you anurban bhai for putting this together this yeah. sab aapki upaj hai sabse pehle fir humne hamari upaj is list mein <laughs> yeah to this aaj ka discussion bhi pura upaj hi tha all these questions i mean you know fantastic exactly totally upaj questions some questions exactly. are standard we expect these kind of questions so the right, first right. three two three questions were like standard but then the upaj started उसके बाद हाथ गरम हो गया फिर रियाज चालू हो गया वेलकम टू मिस्टर जाति दिस विल बी माय नेक्स्ट वीडियो सो थैंक यू सो मच एवरीवन हु हैव या टू ऑल दिस या थैंक्स टू ऑल गुड नाइट या सो हैव अ गुड नाइट एवरीवन एंड इफ यू डिडंट लाइक एनीथिंग आई सेड please let me know because uh, <laughs> whatever i said it's directly from the heart so if i have hurt anyone or if if somebody didn't like it please let me know because that will be also a learning experience for me in future what not to say you know <laughs> yeah man <laughs> uh, thank you everyone good night thank okay. you thank you so much bye bye have a great bye. night yeah take care